Live on a Sunday afternoon, it's Utah Grizzlies hockey as it's the second and final game of a two-game series between the Grizzlies and the Wichita Thunder. Hi, everybody. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza as it's Utah Grizzlies hockey. We're hanging out in the lobby at Maverick Center, and the Grizzlies are one time zone away over in Wichita, Kansas, as Utah is looking to extend their winning streak against the Thunder to seven games. The first season meeting between the Grizzlies and Thunder was on Friday night, and Utah got a 5-4 to four overtime win as Zach Seco scored 622 in overtime as he got his 10th goal of the season. Cameron Wright and Trent Miner with the assist. Cameron Wright had three assists for the Grizzlies on Friday night, and he's been outstanding in his last six games where he has six goals and four assists. So watch out for Cameron Wright, who's going to be wearing number 15 for the Grizzlies once again this afternoon. They're taking on Roman Basden, who's the Wichita goaltender, is making his professional debut. Trent Miner will go for the Grizzlies as he looks for his 10th win of the season. Miner got the victory on Friday night as he stopped 37 of 41 as he now leads the club with nine victories this season. So it should be a lot of fun. The Grizzlies have been a good road team as they have six straight Point. They have a standings point in six straight road games. They've also got a record of 14, 13, and 3 away from Maverick Center. So the Grizzlies have been a good team away from home, and they look to continue that here this afternoon as they take on the Wichita Thunder over at Intrust Bank Arena, and it should be a lot of fun. We'll see if the Grizzlies can extend their winning streak against Wichita to seven games, dating all the way back to the start of the 2021-22 season. The scratches for the Grizzlies tonight are the same as yesterday as Utah is going with the same 17 skaters. Victor Bartley will be out, so will Vladislav Mikalchuk. Grizzlies are also without Corey Thomas and Johnny Walker. And should be an interesting one this afternoon. Watch out for Dakota Raby, who did end his seven-game point scoring streak on Friday. He's got a point in seven of his last eight games. And for the Grizzlies, it'll be interesting to see really what Dylan Fitz can do for an encore. Fitz in his last eight games has 12 points. When we return to the Utah Grizzlies pregame report presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott, we'll be joined by Guy Krenz and get his thoughts on what's going to happen over at Intrust Bank Arena. We're in business on a Sunday afternoon, and you're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Krenza. As we got hockey over at Mintrust Bank Arena, maybe as hopefully the screen won't freeze a million times like it already has here. But, Guy, you know, nevertheless, uh, hopefully we'll be able, be able to see some hockey this afternoon. For the Grizzlies, it was an entertaining 5-4 to four overtime win on Friday. Zach Seckos got the game when it was only his second game in the 2023 calendar year. He played on February 3rd. He missed the entire month of January, played on February 3rd, played about half that game, got injured, missed another month, and came back and got the game winner on Friday night against Wichita, and it's certainly great to see him back in the lineup. Yeah, it is great to see him back, and he really looked great last night. It seemed like he was flying on the ice, and really, you wouldn't have guessed that he would have missed a long time with that injury, but he's back, and he made a big impact, and the Grizzlies are right back to in the winning column. It was good to see Cameron right back after missing three straight games. Wright had three assists, and he's now tied with Andrew Nilsson, who's currently in the AHL with the uh, Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. He was loaned to them uh, just this last week. And Cameron Wright's now time for the club lead with Andrew Nilsson. You think about over the last six games that he's played in, the five before he got injured, and obviously the one on Friday night, he's got six goals and four assists. And so he's been amazing for the Grizzlies as of late. Yeah, Cameron Wright, his rookie season, he's been on an absolute tear all year long. Uh, it's really getting him and Sekos back in the lineup is huge for the Grizzlies. And it was apparent last night, and I think going forward, if the Grizzlies want to make a push for the playoffs here, these two guys, they're going to be right in the thick of it, and they're going to lead the charge for the Grizzlies. 
Utah has been pretty good on Sundays this season. They are 4-1 and one on the Lord's Day. I mean, think about offensively, the Grizzlies really have been rolling. Over the last nine games, Grizzlies have scored 40 goals. And so, you know, for Utah, I think that offensively, you know, I think you just have to continue to play that north-south and really – uh, take a team like Wichita, put them on their heels a little bit. Yeah, Tyson, it's funny. You mentioned that North-South game. That's something that the Grizzlies do really well. You also mentioned last night that Wichita's defense and Wichita overall is a bit of a bigger team than the Grizzlies. I think the Grizzlies, the key for them to win this game is to use their speed. The Grizzlies are an excellent team uh, when they're playing to the best of their abilities, and that's using their speed and using their shot to catch their team off the guard. So I think for the Grizzlies, you just have to find a way to get around the Wichita Thunder and also be physical back. And think about two of Utah's fastest players, Dakota Raby, as a point in seven of his last eight games. He's fourth on the club with 29 points. And I think Cam Strong is one of Utah's faster players. And how about him over the last nine games, or maybe eight games? Over the last eight games, he's got nine points, three goals and six assists. He's a plus five in his last five games. So Cam Strong's really come on as of late. Yeah, he really has. And it's really good to see him playing uh, his best hockey of the season right now is he got off to a little bit of a slow start to start the season. And then he kind of developed some chemistry with Dylan Fitz. Jordan Martell started making chemistry with some other guys on this team. And ever since then, he's been fantastic. He's been really a dominant force for this team. He drives the net really well. Uh, he's been getting points. He's been making contributions. And it's really good to see overall. Who's going to be the Optum first goal of the game? Optum is creating a healthier world. One insight, one connection, one person at a time. Optum is committed to making healthcare work better, leading the way to better experiences, better health, and lower costs for you. Guy who's going to be the Optum first goal of the game scorer for you. Well, Tyson, I think uh, I think it's got to be Dakota Raby for me. This is a guy that had his uh, seven-game point streak snapped last game, uh, but really he's been a dominant force for the Grizzlies for over the last couple of weeks. He's got uh, nine points in his last eight games. He's been fantastic. I continue. I I, I figure that he's going to get right back on his horse and continue to produce. So you got. I forgot who you have. <laughs> I picked Dakota Raby. You got Dakota Raby. I'm going to go with, who did I say on, on Twitter? I, I mentioned uh, somebody. Uh, Zach Sekos. Uh, yeah, that's it. This I mentioned Zach Secco. So I think he's going to get Utah's first goal. And I think it was interesting to see the power play unit on Friday without Andrew Nilsson. Utah went with five forwards. And Zach Secos, Taron Pfizer, and uh, you know, think about you know, those guys you know, kind of working the puck around. I think Secos is going to get a pretty good look in the slot. No fire, lefty shot. Past a new goaltender for Wichita, Roman Bazran is making his professional debut. And when you think about him, he's probably nervous today. You know, he played a little bit in college earlier this season. So with Bazran, I think it's important for the Grizzlies. You know, after all, Utah took 58 shots on Friday. I think it's going to be important to pepper him with shots early. Yeah, Tyson, I think the formula for the Grizzlies in this game has to be the same as it was on Friday. Just go out, play with a lot of energy, and start taking a lot of shots. The Grizzlies took a ton of shots on Friday, something that they don't usually do. But I think the memo from coach was, hey, shoot on Capital Master. His stats coming into last uh, Friday's game weren't that great. And so I think the Grizzlies knew that. And uh, unfortunately for the Grizzlies, Capital Master put on a great show. Uh, Grizzlies did still get the win, but I think the message has to be the same. And a guy like Bazran, his first pro game, startle him, get him, get him jumping right out of the gate, see what he can do, and maybe you can sneak a few past him early. When we come back to the Utah Grizzlies pregame report, we'll give you the starting lineups for both teams. It's the Grizzlies and the Thunder over at Interest Bank Arena. And you're listening to the Utah Grizzlies pregame report presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best day or night hot or ice enjoy a fresh cup today when you pay with the nitro card at maverick you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon every day and you could save a whole lot more thanks to nitro best price pick up a nitro card and upgrade your adventure club Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Ty Swiding here with Guy Carenza. Let's get to the starting lineups for both teams. First for the homestanding Utah Grizzlies, led by second-year head coach Ryan Kanasiewicz 
His assistant is Jared Pike. The equipment manager is Mason Wayland, who celebrated a birthday on Friday, and the trainer is Colin Lee. Starting in net for the Grizzlies is Trent Miner, who is 6'1", 198 pounds. He's got a record of 9-12-2 with two shutouts. He's the Grizzlies' all-time shutout king with nine. He's got a 3.14 goals against average and 9.09 save percentage. Miner has played in 24 games this season. He'll be wearing number 50. His backup is Lucas Preak, who's played in 18 games this season. Garrett Metcalf was just reassigned to the Grizzlies as he was released from a loan with the Calgary Wranglers. So Garrett Metcalf is brought back to the Grizzlies roster earlier today, and the Grizzlies did release goaltender Brent Moran. So Moran got released, and Garrett Metcalf is back on the Grizzlies roster. He's going to fly back to the Salt Lake Valley, and he'll be on the roster for the Grizzlies when they take on the Kansas City Mavericks for a three-game set at Mavericks Center March 10th, 11th, and 12th. Starting defensive pairing for the Grizzlies, Bryson Martin, who was an even plus-minus on Friday against Wichita. He's got two goals and five assists in 40 games this season. Martin, a former third-round pick of the Buffalo Sabres. He'll be paired up with Kyle Pouncey, who's played in his 49th game this season. A Pouncey played in five games with the Wichita Thunder over a two-year stretch. Four games at the end of the 2019-2020 season and one game at the start of the 2020-21 campaign. So Martin and Pouncey are the two defensemen who are starting. We'll also see James Shearer, who has three goals and 11 assists in 35 games. He'll be paired up with the captain, Connor McDonald. And how about Connor McDonald as of late? The captain is a plus 10. His last eight games. So watch out for Connor McDonald, who's been doing some great stuff for the Grizzlies. Aaron Thoe was unbelievable on Friday. How good was he? Two goals and two assists on Friday. He had two goals and one assist at the end of Friday. And then the off ice officials, the stats people, added an assist for Aaron Thoe. So he has two goals and two assists on Friday night. He was unbelievable. It was his first multiple point game of the season, and he really made it count with four points on Friday against Wichita. This season, Aaron Thoe has four goals and 10 assists in 48 games. And he'll be paired up with the Florida native, Joey Colatarsi, who's still looking for his first point of the season. Colatarsi will appear in his 30th game. So the starting defensemen are Martin and Pouncey. The other defensemen will be sure McDonald, Thoe, and Colatarsi. The defensemen who are scratches tonight are Victor Bartley and Corey Thomas. Starting forwards for the Grizzlies, number 15, Cameron Wright. He's been amazing over his last six games where he's got six goals and four assists. He had three helpers on Friday night in the Grizzlies' 5-4 overtime victory. He'll be paired up with Zach Sekos, Friday night's hero. He was the game's number one star. He scored his 10th goal of the season, 6-22 into overtime. This will be Sekos' third game in the 2023 calendar year. He'll be wearing number 17, and he'll be lined up next to Dakota Raby, the Michigan man who last season was a graduate transfer at Sacred Heart University. And Raby has 10 goals and 19 assists in 48 games. He's got a point in seven of his last eight games. So starting forwards are Wright, Sekos, and Raby. The other forwards we're expected to see tonight include Dylan Fitz, who's been outstanding. He had a great month of February, and he scored a goal in the second period on Friday. In fact, he was the Optum first goal of the game score. And remember, with Optum, they are putting you at the center of everything we do. Make sure to make your pick for the Optum first goal of the game. It was Dylan Fitz on Friday. He has Utah's first goal in five different games this season. Fitz has a point in seven of his last eight contests, and we had he had 11 points in 12 games in the month of February. Fitz will be wearing number 13. He'll be lined up next to Keaton Jamison, who's got 10 goals and 12 assists in 52 games. He had one goal on Friday night. We'll also see Taron Pfizer in there. Pfizer, 18 goals and 17 assists in 43 games. Pfizer and Cameron Wright are each tied for the club lead with 18 goals. We'll see Fitz, Jamison, and Pfizer. We'll also see Jared Power, who got one assist on Friday, but then it was taken away and given to Aaron Tho. So Jared Power still looking for his first professional point. It's his second pro game. He played at Mount Royal University earlier this season and had five goals and 10 assists in 27 games and a plus seven rating. Power is 6'2", 185 pounds. His hometown is Calgary, Alberta. And Jared Power, who's got a good combination of size, speed, and skill, It'll be interesting to see him in the Grizzlies lineup as he'll be on the third line as he'll be on the left wing wearing number 20. He'll be lined up next to Cam Strong, who's got nine goals and 10 assists in 51 games. And Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies Iron Man, who's appeared in all 54 games this season with today's game being number 54. Penner appeared in all 18 games last year. And since he started the 2021-22 campaign, Tyler Penner has appeared in every game. This year he's got nine goals and nine assists. Christian Simeone, the second-year pro at Mary Mack, will be in there, along with the rooster, Jordan Martell, who 
Tampa. Seven goals and 20 assists in 45 games. So the starting forwards once again are Raby, Sekos, and Wright. We'll also see Fitz, Jamison, Pfizer, along with Power, Strong, and Penner, Simeone, and Jordan Martell. Starting a net for the Wichita Thunder is Roman Bazran, who's making his professional debut. He is 6'2 and 195 pounds. He spent a lot of time practicing with the AHL's Abbotsford Canucks. Then he went and played college hockey earlier this season as he was a member of Brock University. And in seven games at Brock, he had a record of 5-2 and two with a 9.17 save percentage at 2.54 goals against average. Baz Rand is 6'2 and 192 pounds. He is 21 years old. So Roman Baz Rand will be the starting goaltender. Starting defensive pairing, Kyle Rhodes wearing number three. Rhodes has nine points in 50 games. Cole McDonald is somebody to watch out for on the Wichita power play. He's got 23 power play points this season. He'll be wearing number 26. Cole McDonald is the Wichita captain. Grizzlies captain is Connor McDonald. And so two McDonald's, although Cole McDonald spells his last name with an A, M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D, whereas Connor McDonald doesn't have an A in his last name. Starting forwards, Gavin Gould, the former Allen American, has one goal and 17 assists this year. Jake Dickman, a third-year pro, Dickman, has 50 points in 55 games, 20 goals and 30 assists. And Jake Wallen, who scored a shorthanded goal in the second period uh, on Friday night, he's got 10 goals and 14 assists in 55 games. Well, when we come back, we'll face off over at Interest Bank Arena. It's the Grizzlies and the Thunder. Face offs coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network, presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Expectations here will always remain high and we'll continue to find a way. put together a lot of good games you know it's a great night for hockey as two big standings points are on the line tonight as the Grizzlies take on the Wichita Thunder for the second of a two-game set Utah won in overtime five to four on Friday night both teams had yesterday off Utah's got a standings point in six straight road games they've been pretty good Away from Maverick Center, in fact, they've got a winning record on the road at 14, 13, and 3. Wichita has been a pretty tough team at home this year. They've got a record of 19, 7, and 4. Wichita's got 57 standings points. They're currently in third place in the Mountain Division, one point behind the Kansas City Mavericks, who are taking on Idaho at Cable Dama Arena in Kansas City about the same time the Grizzlies will do battle against the Thunder. Utah's in fifth place in the Mountain Division with 51 standings points, four points behind Allen. Allen is currently taking on Rapid City as we speak over at the Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Looks like a good Sunday afternoon crowd over at Interest Bank Arena. I'm Tyson Whiting hanging out at the lobby at Maverick Center, one time zone away, and I just pray that my screen won't freeze continually like it did here over the last 20 minutes. Grizzlies are wearing the white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim. Wichita is wearing a blue jersey with white numbers, colors that look very similar to the Tampa Bay Lightning. As Wichita will skate from left to right as we see it on Flow Sports. Your mind's eye see it on YouTube. Grizzly skating from right to left. As off the draw, Utah wins it. Bryson Martin moves it ahead. Grizz cross center. They feed a right wing pass. Utah looks to center it onto power as it kicks off the skate of the goaltender Roman Bazran making his pro debut. 
Wichita across the center ice, right wing pass to Jay Dickman, who will bounce off the boards and roll towards Bryson Martin as Martin feeds over to the far side. Wichita, the attacking zone. Bryson Martin moves ahead looking for Secos, but it hits off the stick of Cameron right. Now Zach Secos crosses the center ice. He gains the line, veers off to the left. But everybody stops skating as it looks like the Grizzlies are offside as we get our first whistle 31 seconds into the game. Everybody make your pick for the Optum first goal of the game. Optum is creating a healthier world. One insight, one connection, one person at a time. I am going to go with Zach Sekos, my Optum first goal. Guy Carenza, who's your pick? I'm going with Dakota Raby. He's going with Dakota Raby. They're on the same line along with Cameron Wright. Draw it, new tries. One by Wichita. They'll dump it in. Connor McDonald, the Grizzlies captain, throws it out to new tries. Wichita back skates towards their own end. Now Utah takes it. Dylan Fitz left side. They'll take a shot and it goes wide. This puck rolls towards Keaton Jamison. He overskates along the far wing boards. Now Wichita chips in out the center. As the Thunder skate in, right wing, righty shot, saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the right corner as Keaton Jamison throws it towards Fitz. Now to center ice, pass connects. Grizzly skate down, Pfizer's got breakaway, take a shot, saved by Bazran. As the puck bounced off the glass, it might have gone wide. It's tough to track the puck sometimes on these video feeds. As Jamison looks to center it and over towards Fitz, he'll feed it up top for the captain, McDonald. Now left wing to Tho, who had four points on Friday night, two goals and two assists. Grizzlies towards the near side, get a back up top for Tho, take a lefty shot. Glove saved by Bazran. Shot would have gone wide, but Bazran skated to the left of his crease to hold on to it. 1834 left in the first. Bazran looks like he's got pretty decent size, 6'2, 195 pounds. He's got to be nervous. He's making his professional debut this afternoon. Grizzlies make a line change. Jared Powers wearing number 20, his second pro game. Cam Strong is taking the face off. Tyler Penner on the right side. Draw one by Strong and the Grizzlies as Strong skates to the corner with the puck as he gets hit by number 44, Dominic Dockery. Now behind Wichita's net. Puck taken by Power. He'll feed it to the right side. Cole Tarsi, righty shot. Saved by Bazran. Puck still loses. Cam Strong skates towards the near side. Feeds up top for James Shearer, but Wichita cuts in front of them, and they'll clear it out. So puck ends up in the Grizzlies zone. Cole Tarsi feeds to the far side. Now cross off the boards for looking for Shearer, but he'll let a Cam Strong take it. He'll move it ahead, and the puck rolls off of Bazran, who kicks it to the near corner. As we're two minutes into the game, still no score. Wichita feeds it to the near side. It goes out to center, taken by Penner, who will feed it back to Bryson Martin. Now Martin gets it back as he'll skate down the middle. He crosses center ice. He's got good speed. Gets to the blue line, takes a lefty shot, and it goes high and wide as it bounces off the glass and the end boards. As Gavin Gould, number seven, gets hit, skates towards the far corner of his own end. Puck bounces off a Pfizer stick, goes out to center ice. As Utah. Christian Simeone skates towards the near side. Now I'll move it ahead. Puck goes past Martin. Now Martel skates left side. Backhand shot. Saved by Bazran. As it looked like Wichita turned it over, and Martel turned it into a great scoring chance. Now ahead to Gavin Gould. Right side, he's in the offensive zone. Gets around Kyle Pouncey, but Pouncey pokes the puck away from him. Now Pouncey loses it. As Wichita fans on a pass in the right corner. Pfizer gets taken away by Gould, who now battles with Bryce and Martin in the corner. Pfizer over there as well. And skating is Jake Dickman. He gets the puck as he'll skate towards the left point. Dickman's a big guy at 6'6", 229 pounds. Dickman gets around the net. Now he chips it out in front. Shot saved by Miner. Now Dickman will feed it towards the near wing boards. Wichita throws it up top. As Kyle Rhodes, number three with long hair, will chip it around the boards. Now Wichita tried to get it back to the right circle from behind the net. Picked up by Pfizer, who ice the puck as we get a whistle. And the arm is raised by the linesman. 16-39 left in the first guy. What have you seen here early on? Well, Tyson, really good start here from the Grizzlies. I like that they're moving with speed, something I talked about in the pregame. Terran Pfizer had a really good chance, as did Jordan Martell. Seems like they're trying to test Bazran early. He's been up to the task so far, but the Grizzlies just need to continue to put pucks on net. So draws going to be back in the Grizzlies zone. Next to Trent Miner. He's looking for his 10th one of the season. Draws over the left side, and Utah gets it. Christian Simeone will throw it out to center ice. Grizzlies towards the left, dump it in, and they make a line change. About three and a half minutes into the game, still no score. As Wichita gets out towards center ice, pass into their offensive zone, but it's taken back by McDonald over to Tho, who moves ahead to the left side. Grizzlies get it. Cameron Wright feeds it to Secos, who swings and misses on a one-timer from the slot. Secos gets it back as they'll skate towards the left point. Now he skates towards his right. He's now on the right point, and so backhand it towards the far corner. As 
Puck ends up back towards the right side. Grizzlies towards the right circle. Dakota Raby dances around. Raby feeds out in front. It bounced off a of Grizzly, and it's Zach Seko. Sekos goes down. He's over to the right side, gets back to his feet slowly as he picks up his stick. Now Aaron Tho towards the left side, takes a shot, saved by Bazran. Rebound goes out to Tho, who gets blasted along the near wing boards. Tho tries to get it back. Raby in the area. Raby towards the left side, gets over to Tho. Tho towards the left circle. He'll get in shooting position, takes a shot, and it's blocked by Hoffman. Zach Hoffman, number six defenseman, as Zach Seckos, toe drag, slot, shot, saved by Bazran. Rebound goes out to Wichita. Thunder will lift it out to center ice and dump it in. As Aaron Tho will chase after it. Grizzlies get there first. It's not Tho, though. It's Connor McDonald, the Grizzlies captain, who's paired up with Tho. As McDonald back behind his net, he'll throw it to the near side for Tho. Still chipping out towards center ice, and it looks like it's going to be Icing on the Grizzlies, but it's waved off. Jamison skates over there. So is Pfizer trying to chip it back to Jamison, who's battling in the corner with Cameron Huff, who's wearing number 14. Now the puck goes to Wichita. Long-range pass, blue line to blue line. Bounces off a thunder skit stick. Goes back deep in the Grizzly zone. Kyle Pouncey delivers a hit. Now Dylan Fitz moves it ahead. He gets hit. Jamison chases after it. It's in Wichita's zone. Thunder have it. As we're about five and a half minutes into the game, still no score. Wichita lifts it high into the air, and it rolls towards Trent Miner, plays to the left of his net, gives it to Shearer, back towards Pfizer on the far side. Utah chips out to center behind Fitz off the boards. Fitz gets it. He'll skate towards the left circle, take a righty shot, saved by Bazran. And he holds on with 14-27 left in the first. Good opportunity by the Grizzlies that was denied by Roman Bazran. But, guy, the Grizzlies are looking pretty sharp here so far. Yeah, Tyson, they are. They're doing exactly what I wanted them to do is come out with a lot of speed, a lot of fury right out of the gate, start testing Bazran, and they've done just that. I think it's only a matter of time before a puck finds its way into the back of the net. So draws going to be over in the left circle. As it's taken by Cam Strong. Tyler Penner has moved into that line with Strong and Jared Power. It's interesting to see Power making his second professional appearance. He played well on Friday. As Wichita wins the faceoff, ice it. It goes between the Grizzlies defenseman, and icing is called on the Thunder. But 14-21 left in the first. The draw comes back towards Roman Bazram. This is about the time of year where you start to see teams sign players from colleges and junior leagues, things like that. And uh, with that, you know, you're going to see a lot of roster movement. And with Jared Power, he might be the first of many new players to join the Grizzlies here in the month of March. Strong will take the face off in the right circle. This time it's won by Utah. Grizz are skating from right to left as we see it in the first period. Power throws it over to the point. It's picked off as Wichita gets across to J.A. Dickman. He skates towards the right side, takes a right wing lefty shot. Stick saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the near corner as Penner battles with Tho. Now Wichita behind the net. They skate towards their right. Still no score six minutes in. As Gavin Gould wearing number seven. Skates towards the left side, takes a lefty shot, and it's blocked. Might have hit the side of the net. Gold tries to get it back. He battles with Bryson Martin in the corner. Throw over there as well. Puck glides towards Jared Power. Power towards the fights. The far side feeds to the slot. Now to Penner. Stops in the left point. And so he'll get it back over. Power skates over there. Dickman gets there first. He cuts in front of him. He'll spin it along the, towards the far boards. Grizzlies right point. Fires a righty shot. Saved by Bazran. And he holds on as we get a whistle. 13-37 left in the first. My screen has frozen quite a few times. And we'll come back in one minute as there's no score on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, Surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First, and see where life takes you. 13-37 left in the first period. No score, but the Grizzlies have fired a lot of shots on more. Roman Baz and Hurler. Her, her. Yeah, Tyson, they are. They were up to 12 shots already in about the first six minutes or so of this game. Wichita only has three. Grizzlies took 58 shots 
The 5-4 overtime win on Friday night. Wichita wins the faceoff. They throw it towards the near side. Puck bounces off the boards. Grizzlies gather it. Dakota Raby skates towards the near wing boards. Utah in the attack zone. He'll get it to the left point for sure. He'll take a lefty shot. Glove saved by Bazran. He holds on with 13-25 left in the first. Offensive zone draw will stay in the Wichita zone. And for the Grizzlies, you know, think about, you know, Utah has a lot, a lot of shots this season, about 36 per game. But Wichita has a lot, about 38 shots per game. So drawn the near side is won by Wichita. Zach Hoffman will throw it towards Austin Crosley, the former Grizzly. So he'll feed it back towards the near corner. Grizzlies throw it up top looking for sure. He feeds it across. It's towards the far side. McDonald in the area. Wichita will bounce it off of McDonald. We get a whistle. And could we have our first penalty of the game? Let's see. It looks like the Thunder are going to get a penalty. And the Grizzlies are, go- are going to get a power play. It's going to be the former Grizzly, Austin Crosley, who... It's up towards 100 penalty minutes this season. In fact, that's penalty minute 99 and 100 for Crosley on the year. Started the campaign with the Florida Everblades, second-year pro, as he's in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Have you or someone you know been charged with a DUI? Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious, and you need great attorneys on your first line. Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw away or disregard this letter. Call and get Utah's number one DUI defense team. Rodgers and Russell. Wichita wins the faceoff, and they clear it all the way in the Grizzlies zone. Utah attacks from left to right. Cameron Wright gets the new tries. He'll drop it off for Pfizer across the center. Over to Secos, back to Raby, who bounces off the stick of Secos, puck deep in the Wichita zone. Thunder get it and clear it out. Taking it, it's Cameron Wright. He skates around Miner's net. Right, who's got 13 power play points this season? Will skate towards neutralize. Now he'll drop it off as Wichita gets it and clears it back out. Thunder towards the left side skates over towards the Grizzlies goal line, but Utah takes it as now the Grizzlies get to Raby on the left side. He steps over the blue line. He gets it poked away, and Wichita clears it out again. Trent Miner towards the far side of his net will get it as. Back for Utah. As we're halfway through the power play, looks like the Grizz made a line change. They feed it out to the right side as Utah skates towards the far corner. Now around the net, Jay Dickman gets it in the near side, and he'll clear it all the way out. Miner cuts it off just to the far side of his net, and he'll drop it off. Martin and Shearer, the two defensemen for the Grizzlies. Less than 12 minutes left in the first period, still no score. As Martin fakes it to Shearer, now he feeds it to the right side. Grizzlies cross center. As Utah skates towards the right side, the Rooster will take a righty shot and he scores. The Grizzlies get a power play goal, and it's Jordan Martell, the Rooster, getting his eighth of the year. And the Grizz have taken a 1 nothing lead with 13, with 11, 37 left in the first. And Martell just skated into the offensive zone, coast to coast, skated down the middle, now veered off to the right circle and just fired one pass. Roman Baz ran. Yeah, Tyson, that was a heck of a shot there by the Rooster, getting the first goal of the game, the Optum. First goal of the game, and that's a good sign for the Grizzlies as they're 15 and 5 when they score first. Jordan Martell's the Optum first goal of the game score. Optum is committed to making healthcare work better, leading the way to better experiences, better health, and lower costs for you. Wichita wins the face off. They dump it towards the near side, and icing is on the Thunder. 11 29 left in the first as Utah leads 1 0, and Jordan Martell. Gets his eighth goal of the season. It's his 46th game overall. He started the season in the uniform of the Fort Wayne Comets and came over in a trade for Neil Robinson, and he's certainly been a big addition for the Grizzlies. Christian Simeone will take the face off. He's got Penner to his left, and to his right, I think, is Jared Power. Aaron throws up top, though had a four-point game on Friday. Is a draw won by Wichita as the Thunder skate from left to right. Grizzlies with a power play goal here early on, lead one nothing. Thunder with a long-range pass that doesn't connect, and icing is on the Thunder. This time with 11 minutes and 21 seconds left in the first. So Martell got the goal. The assist went to number 14, Bryson Martin. And Trent Miner gets his second assist of the series. Miner now has four assists this season. So for Bryson Martin, it's his sixth assist of the campaign. And Jordan Martell really did a lot of the work himself, kind of skating into the offensive zone, founding a, you know, finding a spot on the right side. He can score from both circles, it seems like, the left or the right. Secos to take the face off. He's in the offensive zone. Utah wins it. Dakota Raby skates towards the near side, stops before he gets to the corner as he surveys. Now Raby throws it up top for Aaron Thoe, who feeds it back towards the right corner as right. 
Gets it to somebody. He throws it back to the right, the near corner. Wichita takes it away. Kyle Rhodes behind the net. He'll skate towards the near side to lift it high into the air. It's gloved by Thobe. Dropped. Wichita takes it away. As the Thunder towards the left side. Takes a lefty shot that goes wide. Puck glides towards the near boards. Out to neutralize. Wichita gets it back. As the Thunder feed a right wing pass towards Kyle Rhodes. He chips over to the right circle. Looking for number 22, Mikel Stanell. Grizzlies poke it back to center. Two on three. Raby skates towards the left side. He'll dump it in as Grizzlies towards the right side near the point. Takes a lefty shot and it's blocked before it gets to Bazran. As he thunder, throw it out to center ice. As Gould throws it between his legs towards number 43, Quinn Preston, who had a first period goal. As Preston skates towards the right side and my screen froze. And so Utah leads 1-0 about halfway through the first period. Now action towards the Grizzly zone. Shot saved by Bazran. He holds on. Now there's 10 minutes and 6 seconds. Or 10.08 left in the first. Utah leads 1-0. Grizzlies have been awfully busy here so far. Yeah, Tyson, they have. I really like this start to the game for the Grizzlies, and I really like that goal. Great shot by the Rooster, but also remember it's a power play goal. The Grizzlies had four chances on the power play in Friday's game. Weren't able to convert on any of those chances. They're one for one here tonight. Grizzlies have already taken 15 shots to Wichita's five. As the Grizzlies, Terran Pfizer around the net, and the puck bounces towards Bazran, who covers up. As looked like Pfizer was trying to feed somebody out in front, and he got too close to the Wichita goaltender. Timeout on the ice. Jordan Martell on a power play goal, 8.23 in as Utah up by one. Bryson Martin and Trent Miner with the assist. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Utah leads 1-0, 957 left in the first period. Draws gonna be over on the far side. Utah's already taken 15 shots on Roman Bazran, the Richita goaltender. Utah wins the draw. James Shear, left wing, fires a shot saved by Bazran. He holds on. Turn Pfizer is out in front of the net trying to redirect it, but it stays a one-nothing game as Pfizer didn't get a piece of it. Grizzlies will keep the puck in the offensive zone, and Utah has had the puck in the offensive zone quite a bit here in the first period. Don't forget the Grizzlies will be home for a three-game set against the Kansas City Mavericks this upcoming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday the 12th is going to be a 3-10 start. Don't forget the Stanley Cup will be at Maverick Center on Saturday, March 11th. Get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com to see the Stanley Cup live and in person here at Maverick Center. As Utah will take on Kansas City. Big games in the Mountain Division standings. Utah wins the draw. Pfizer throws up top. Now Sure gets it left side. He skates towards the circle. Sure, towards the near goal line, gets it. Now he'll skate back towards the point. Wichita pokes it away from him as Jamison throws it back to Sure. Delayed penalty. He'll feed it to the right side. Shot and a score! Grizzlies make it a 2 nothing game as they score with 9.38-6 left in the first. Well, sure skated towards the left side, fed it across, and... That was over there. Looked like Kyle Pouncey. I think Pouncey gets his second of the year. Sure, fed it to Pouncey, and Pouncey put it away. So Pouncey getting some revenge against the team that cut him at the start of the 2020-21 season. So Kyle Pouncey gets his second goal of the year, and Utah leads 2-0 with 9.36 left in the first. James Sure is going to get an assist on that as he fed it from the near circle all the way to the right side. Kyle Pouncey put it away. Jamison and Pfizer over there as well as Fitz. That forward line gets a plus as Wichita gets the puck in the left side towards center ice as Martell over to Cam Strong. He'll skate towards his right as my goodness, my screen froze again. As Grizzlies run the neutral zone, they've had an outstanding first period. Just one offensive attack after another. Action is in the Wichita zone. 
9.05 left in the first. The Thunder skate towards the near boards. It's the Thunder out towards center ice. Chip it in as it goes back over to the right side. Lefty shot goes wide as the puck glides towards the left corner. Wichita centering pass shot. Swing and a miss as Grizzlies get it back. Utah attacking from right to left here in the first period. 8.53 left in as Utah leads 2-0 on goals from Jordan Martell and Kyle Pouncey. As now it looks like the Grizzlies scored again. Utah's made it three to nothing. While my screen was frozen, uh, Utah skated down the you know down the ice, and the Grizzlies have scored again. As everybody starts celebrating, it's now a three nothing game. So the Grizzlies just pumping one goal after another. I hate to say it, but my screen was frozen. I have no clue what happened, but the Grizzlies. Have scored three on Roman Bazran. Wichita wins the draw. We got less than nine minutes left in the first period. As the Thunder skate from left to right. As the Thunder, my screen's frozen again. We'll be back in one minute. See if we're going to pair this thing. Utah's up 3-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life. I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Well, Utah's extended the lead. It's now a 3 nothing game. Guy, what happened on Utah's third goal? Well, Tyson, we didn't see it. Uh, our screen froze, but it looks like it was Tyler Penner getting his 10th of the year. Assist goes to the rooster, Jordan Martelli, picks up his second point of the game. That comes 11-16 into the first period. So the Grizzlies have pumped three goals on Wichita as we got 7:51 left in the first period. And unfortunately, we're continuing to have technical difficulties as Jordan Martell... Got Utah on the board, 8-23 in with Martin and Penner beginning the assist. Kyle Pouncey made it a 2 nothing game as he scored. 10-24 in, Sure and Jamison with the assist. And then Tyler Penner scored 11-16 in with Jordan Martell getting the assist. Wichita's on a power play for the next minute as Dakota Raby got two minutes for slashing, 11-28 into the first. Wichita to the left side, fires it towards the circle. Thunder skate around the net as Wichita towards the right side as they'll feed it up top. As the Thunder, Cole McDonald, skate back towards his right. Screen froze again. So Wichita's in the middle of their power play. About seven minutes left in the first period. As Utah's up 3 0. The shots to Wichita's seven. As the Grizzlies just continue to. Play good hockey here on this road trip. They got a 5-4 to four victory on Friday night. And this evening, it's a Grizzlies 3-0 lead. As Wichita high slot shot goes wide. As we got about 10 seconds left in their power play. As the Grizzlies clear it out, Roman Bazran in his professional debut has been awfully busy in the first period. He stopped 16 of 19. Six and a half minutes left in the first period. Wichita moves out to center ice. It's a UDK successful penalty kill for the Grizzlies. As Dakota Raby's out of the box, he'll clear it out to center ice. Retaken by Wichita, who feeds it towards the right side. As the Thunder battle with Utah along the near wing boards, Raby pitches out towards Cameron Wright. Thunder dump it back in. Miner has got an assist so far this afternoon. As Wichita towards the right side, Pouncey with a great defensive play, taking it away. He'll move it ahead to Raby, who's at center ice, two on four. He'll chip it towards the right corner, picked off by Wichita. Thunder move it ahead, out to the right side. Thunder skeet towards the right circle. A shot saved by Miner. As Grizzlies gather it behind their net, Dylan Fitz towards the near side. Less than six minutes left in the first period. Fitz will chip it off the near wing glass. Grizzlies get it. Cameron Wright, as he locates the puck, takes a shot that goes wide. As Wichita skates out towards center ice, they skate from left to right here in the first period. 
It's the Thunder towards the right wing, gained the line. As Stenell feeds to the left side, righty shot, saved by Miner. Great stop by Trent, 534 left in the first period. As that last shot, I believe, was taken by Cameron Huff, number 14. As the Grizzlies have really done a great job being aggressive here early and often in this first period. As Utah up to 19 shots to Wichita's 19. Unfortunately, we've had some technical difficulties, so we didn't get to see the third goal. But Jordan Martell did score on the power play, 823. It's his eighth of the year, Martin, and the goaltender, Trent Miner, with the assist. Kyle Pouncey made it 2-0 as he scored 10-24 in. Sure, and Jamison with the assist. Then Tyler Penner made it 3-0 as he scored 11-16 into the first with Jordan Martell getting the assist. Unfortunately, we can't describe what happened on the Utah third goal, but guy, great first period for the Grizzlies. Yeah, Tyson, I mean, you couldn't have drawn this up any better. Grizzlies have a 3 nothing lead, 5 minutes, 34 seconds left to go in the first. They've been pounding it on Wichita all throughout the first period. And really, this this has just been a fantastic start. And even Trent Miner, he's been great, but we haven't had to see him have a whole lot of action in this first period. Just great all-around <laughs> game from the Grizzlies. The screen's been frozen the last five minutes. We haven't seen much action at all. <laughs> well, that may be true, but he's only <laughs> seen 10 shots in this game, and when he has seen shots, they've really been mostly from the perimeter, really easy shots for him to save aside from that last chance. So even Trent's playing well. The Grizzlies all around, fantastic team effort so far. The Grizzlies have a power play goal. They played good hockey here in the first. 5.34 is left in the first. Utah leads 3 nothing. Draw is going to be over in the far circle of the Grizzlies' zones. We're back to live action. Five and a half minutes left in the first. Off the draw, left point, lefty shot, saved by Miner. Might have gone wide as the puck goes towards Kyle Pouncey in the near corner. And now the Grizzlies get it back to Aaron Tho, wearing number 28. They'll chip it ahead. Richita tries to cut it off in the left point. It goes out towards center ice near Utah's bench. Thunder get it back. They feed it over to Peter Bates, but he couldn't connect on it as Grizzlies Aaron Tho cut in front of him. Tho continues to play great hockey. Wichita to the left side, regains the line. They skate towards the corner. Number 44, Dominic Dockery, back towards the near side. Grizzlies take it away. As keeping it in is Wichita as they poke it back towards Peter Bates, who's behind Utah's net. Bates gets knocked down, though in the area. Left wing, Snell shot, saved by Miner. Now Wichita from the left side centers it. Utah pokes it away as Jared Power gets to the left point, takes a lefty shot, and stays saved by Bazran. Puck goes back to Utah as Jordan Martell, left wing, takes a shot. On it goes just wide. He had some room stick side. It's a puck towards towards the far side. Wichita gets it. They'll feed it out to the near side. Jake Dickman will dump it into the left corner as Miner to the side of his net gets it. Trent will ricochet out the near wing boards. It goes to Dylan Fitz. Fitz with a backhand pass from one blue line to the other. It's gathered by the Thunder. We'll chip it off the glass. It goes to center ice. Near side, Bryce Martin battles with Dickman. As Fitz will throw it towards the Grizzlies bench at the Utah blue line. Pfizer moves it into Thunder territory where it's taken back by Wichita. Rink wide pass to Dickman. He's in the near side, throws it across. Utah picks it up. Bryce Martin skates towards the right side. Chips to the corner as he gets around a Thunder skater, and it's Austin Crosley wearing number 10. Last year, he was number 7 with the Grizzlies. As Dickman from the near side chips out to center ice. Pass to Gavin Gould is taken away. As Connor McDonald battles, McDonald gets it. As Gould was in a battle with James Shearer. McDonald throws to Bryce Martin now ahead as the Grizzlies towards center ice, backhand it. Wichita gathers it, dumps it back in. 3.38 and counting left in the first. Utah leads 3-0. As Wichita feeds it towards the middle, bounced off the skate of Kyle Rhodes and throws, goes back into the near corner. Now Rhodes gets it, right point, shot in his block before it gets to minor about five feet in front of him. Grizzlies towards their blue line will clear it all the way out. Utah makes a line change, so does Wichita. As the Thunder skate towards the near side, Rhodes moves it ahead. Did a Thunder skater get a piece of it? Mark Lewiski in the area. He did. No icing. Puck towards the right side. As Lewiski feeds it back around the boards, Wichita behind the net tries to chip it out in front, but they can't get a shot off. Kyle Pouncey trips him up. Penalty's called, and it was a good one. As Wichita had a good look out in front, Kyle Pouncey did what he had to do as he trips up. Uh, a Thunder skater at, actually was Dakota Raby, number 22, tripping up a Thunder skater. And Raby goes to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. He'll be in for two minutes, but that's a good penalty to take as Wichita was able to get a centering pass from out behind the net. Yeah, Tyson, it is. You never want to see a guy take a penalty, but in that case, that is one where if you're Coach Kanasiewicz, you're a little bit more okay with it because it prevents a scoring chance. For the Grizzlies, uh, right back on the penalty kill. They stopped one earlier. Let's see if they can do it again. It's Raby's second penalty of the first period. He got a slashing minor, 11-28 in. And now with about three minutes left in the first period, Raby gets another penalty. Utah's up 3-0. Wichita wins the faceoff as Cole McDonald skates towards his left. He'll chip it back to the right circle. Now to uh, 
And now to Preston, one timer goes wide. Grizzlies trying to clear it out. It stays in. Bates throws to Cole McDonald. They'll feed it to the left side for Preston. Back to McDonald. Over to Bates. One timer, and it's blocked by Shearer. Gets it. Tries to clear it out. McDonald skates towards the right point to keep it in. McDonald gets hit by Penner, and the puck squirts towards the Thunder zone. Good job by Tyler Penner and company. As the Thunder back deep in their own zone, skate from left to right. Cole McDonald skates along the far side. He's been their quarterback in the power play all season. He'll feed it to the left side. Now across to Bates. Chips it out in front. Shot saved by Miner. Bates gets it back in the right corner. He'll skate towards the point as he surveys. Now feed it back towards the near goal line. Now back to Bates. He'll throw it up top for McDonald. Back to Bates about halfway through Wichita's power play. Bates skates towards the middle. Gets to McDonald. Lefty one-timer, and it goes wide. As it ricochets off the end wall towards the far side. Gets cut off in the left point. Wichita keeps it in. McDonald skates down the middle. Now he gets it poked away. Grizzlies gather it, and the captain, Connor McDonald, clears it out. 45 seconds left in the Wichita power play and 142 and counting left in the first as Wichita back around their net. Connor Walters as the Thunder made a line change as they cross center ice. He'll chip it over to the left side and enter the zone. Wichita feeds it back to the left point. Walters throws to the corner and the puck reverses around the boards back to the right side. Wichita throws it back towards number 14, Cameron Huff. Back towards the left side. Now right side, one-timer. Glove saved by Miner. Mikel Stanell had a pretty good look over there from the right circle, and Trent Miner denies him with 119 left in the first. Looks like Trent's got his A game here so far. Yeah, Tyson Stanell is absolutely flabbergasted. I don't think he could have believed it. A Trent Miner flashing the leather they're getting across to make that save. Beautiful save by Trent. 119 left in the first. Draw is going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Tyson Whiting just hoping that the connection knock on wood continues with us. Holy cow. Draw's going to be over in the right circle. Thanks for sticking with us. We know there's a lot of sports and entertainment options out there. We appreciate you choosing the Grizzlies this afternoon. Utah wins the draw. McDonald moves the head to Zach Seckos. Seckos crosses center ice. Now he decides to skate a little bit faster. He skates towards the right side near the boards. Gets around Kyle Rhodes, but loses the puck. Seckos gets it back. He'll throw it back towards the far side. Now to neutralize as chasing after it's Connor McDonald. And less than one minute's left in the first period as Grizzlies... We'll chip it out to center ice. We're back to five-on-five five skating. It's a Utah disaster cleanup successful penalty kill. Raby fresh out of the box, gets hit, and he gets divorced in the puck as Wichita skates around their own net, skating from left to right here in the first period. As the Thunder move it ahead, now they throw it back towards Walters. He'll throw it to the far side as Wichita gets it out to center ice. As the Thunder, Jake Wallen skates towards the right side, feeds it across. Lefty shot, saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the right side. Wichita chips out in front, shot, and it goes wide. As the Thunder out towards the right side to the corner, Aaron Thode delivers a hit. Puck goes back towards McDonald, but it's picked off by Utah. Grizzlies cross center ice as Jordan Martell feeds it across. Right side, McDonald with a shot. And Grizzlies started to celebrate. So did Cam Strong. It looks like Bazran made the save. Looks like a penalty might be on number 19, Kelly Bent, as Martell bet it across to Fitz. Fitz took the shot. And it looked like Cam Strong glove went flying. And Kelly Bent was over there. It looked like Strong was battling in front of the net with Cole McDonald. Doesn't look like there's a penalty on Wichita. As Bazran made the save, he's been awfully busy here in the first period. 3 0 Grizzlies. They changed the assist on Kyle Pouncey's goal. It's now Shearer and Fitz with the assist instead of Jamison. As a draw on the far side is won by the Thunder. As they'll backhand it out to center ice. Six seconds left in the first. It goes deep in the Grizzlies zone. Shearer gets hit by number 42, Brett Van Oss. Goes back to Cameron Wright. who skates around his net. Now he'll do it for 20 minutes over at Interest Bank Arena. As Zach Sekos and Kelly Benton exchange some words after the final, after the period horn sounds. Ben's a guy who's pretty physical. Six feet, 203 pounds. One of the strongest players on the Thunder roster. Both teams will head to their respective dressing rooms. It was a very good first period for the Grizzlies, who scored three goals. Trent Miner was outstanding in net. And for the Grizzlies, well, you know, they're thinking about winning, having a standing point in six straight road games. They're off to a fantastic start as they lead three to nothing after one period. When we come back, we'll try to recap the first period. And we'll also talk about what the Grizzlies need to do here in the next 40 minutes to secure a two-game series sweep. Once again, the score after one period. 
It's the Grizzlies 3 and the Thunder nothing. We're back in two minutes on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are gonna help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. First intermission over Interest Bank Arena. Utah leads 3-0. Grizzlies had 21 shots in the first period. Wichita had 14, so it looks like a football score in terms of shots. The Grizzlies, three touchdowns to Wichita's two in the first period. For the Grizz, well, it was a balanced back in terms of shots. Still in fits at three. Taron Pfizer, James Shearer, Jared Power, Cam Strong, Jordan Martell, and Aaron Tho each had two shots in the first period. Martell had one goal and one assist in the first period. For Wichita, they had 14 shots. And Peter Bates led the way with three. I want to call him Patrick Bates, who I think was a former football player back in the 1990s with the Atlanta Falcons. Grizzlies got the scoring started 8:23 in as the rooster Jordan Martell skated down the middle, got to the offensive zone, and then veered off to the right circle, found himself a good shooting angle, and fired away as it went past Roman Bazran, the Wichita goaltender, is making his professional debut. Bazran stopped 18 of 21 in the period, so welcome to pro hockey. And Martell made it 1-0. Martin and the goaltender, Trent Miner, with the assist. And so Miner now has four assists this season, including an assist in back-to-back games as he got a helper on the Grizzlies game winner in overtime on Friday when Utah won 5-4. to four. About two minutes later, in fact, two minutes and one second after Martell made it one nothing, it was Kyle Pouncey scoring from the right side as Shearer was to the left side, fed it across to Pouncey, and Pouncey put it away. He gets his second of the year. Shearer gets the assist, which is his 12th, uh, his 12th of the season. And Dylan Fitz also got an assist. It's his 14th helper. Originally, the assist was given to Jamison instead of Fitz, but they changed it to Dylan Fitz, who now has 28 points this season. And now Fitz, who had a seven-game point-scoring streak end a couple games ago, then he scored a goal, and he's got a point in eight of his last nine games. So good job for Dylan Fitz, who was outstanding in February, and he's carried it over into the month of March. Tyler Penner made it 3 nothing as he scored his 10th of the year. Martell with the assist. I have absolutely no description of what happened. As unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties. My screen was frozen. And the only way we knew Utah scored is they started to celebrate. That was the part that we saw. Um, I'm sure if your screen didn't froze, you can describe the play better than we can. But Tyler Penner joins the double-digit goal-scoring club. And now there's nine members who have scored 10 or more goals for the Grizzlies this season. And Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies' Iron Man, joins an elite group. That's about half the roster, at least. But, uh, you know, if you think about it, just as if a couple weeks ago, it was only four or five guys that had picked up their 10th goal. And the Grizzlies, they really have been rolling offensively in their last nine games coming into play tonight. 40 goals in their last nine, and they score another three 
here in the first period. And you have to like the shot count. They had 58 shots on Friday, and already they're up to 21 shots. The Grizzlies were one for two on the power play, and the Grizzlies' penalty kill is a perfect two for two. Two successful Utah disaster cleanup penalty kills. UDK is the number one provider of disaster cleanup services in Utah since 1974. We've been there for customers when they need us the most. That's Utah disaster cleanup. Looks like they're playing pick a, uh, pickleball at center ice over at Interest Bank Arena. How about this? We get a screen that's frozen for the whole period, but we get to intermission. Perfect screen. Uh, go figure. A guy, what'd you see in the first period? Obviously, a dominant one by the Grizzlies. Yeah, Tyson, it was a dominant period for the Grizzlies. I really liked that the way they came out to start this game. It looked like they came out, they wanted the two points. They showed that they were here to play, and the shot count was evident of that. Grizzlies were dominating in the shot category, and then it was only a matter of time before that turned into goals. And here we are with the Grizzlies, a 3 nothing lead through the first 20 minutes of play. And oh, by the way, they're also dominating the special teams department, one for one on the power play and two for two on the penalty kills. So almost a perfect period here for the Grizzlies. And the thing I like is that the Grizzlies were able to dominate the first period offensively, and it wasn't necessarily your big guns. You know, it wasn't right and seco. So each guy had one shot in the first period. Raby also had one shot. It was, uh, you know, a good performance by the third line. You know, Cam Strong continued to produce. Even though he didn't have a point in that first period, he looked good. And I think it's interesting adding Jordan Martel to that list. You think about the Rooster, there are certain games where it seems like Martel is the best guy on the ice. He now has a multiple-point game in three of his last four contests. You know, with the fourth one being today is he, had, he already has two points. You know, he had two points in each of the last two games in these series against Allen last weekend at Maverick Center. So Jordan Martel's really played great hockey for the Grizzlies. Yeah, Tyson, he really has. He's such a dynamic player. You really can slot him into anywhere in the lineup and he'll perform well. And I think that's the great thing about this Grizzlies team is they have a lot of guys that are just like that, where you can put them anywhere throughout the lineup. They've got chemistry with other guys. Uh, really, guys like Tyler Penner, you can slot him on the first line, slot him on the third like third line like he is today. Jameson slides up to the first line. He's been playing really well. I mean, just all throughout the lineup, the Grizzlies are just playing excellent hockey right now, and I think that's exactly what you want to see if you're Coach Kanaswich and Coach Pike heading into the push for the playoffs here. You want to see depth scoring, and the Grizzlies are getting just that. The Grizzlies need to win in order to keep pace with the Allen Americans. That game has gone final over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Allen defeats Rapid City 7-5. to five. So the Grizzlies, you know, you think about Allen and what they did against the Grizzlies offensively last week while Allen continues with the onslaught offensively. Colton Hargrove and Hank Crone each had two goals and two assists. And the Allen Americans outscored Rapid City 4-1 to one in the third period. It looked like Rapid City had a 4-3 to three lead after two periods. But Allen, with a dominant third period, they defeat Rapid City 7-5. to five. That means the Americans... Now I have 57 standings points this season. They're currently tied with Wichita for third place in the division. And for the Grizzlies, obviously want to keep pace. As Utah's in fifth place, Allen right now in a tie for third. And so Allen, Kansas City, you know, Wichita, they're all within a couple points. Kansas City is hosting Idaho today. And that game's in the first intermission. Kansas City leads Idaho 1-0. Kansas City won 2-1 yesterday. And you talk about you know, the Grizzlies and Thunder this game, it's huge in the standings because it looks like Kansas City's playing well. They won on Saturday. They've got a lead after one period today. And the Allen Americans keep winning. And so for the Grizzlies, you're going to have to find a way to keep pace. And that's why a game like today is important. That's why next week against Kansas City in the three-game series is going to be so important in the standings. Yeah, Tyson is huge. And then the Allen Americans are playing excellent hockey right now. We got a taste of that last weekend. They're just – they're a fantastic offensive team. They're really firing on cylinders right now. And so I think that they're probably going to make the playoffs. And now if you're the Grizzlies, you think about who could fall out of the playoff spots that you potentially want to take. Well, you either got to look at Kansas City – or a team like Wichita, and that's why these games here are so huge, where you want to gain ground on the Wichita Thunder, a team that's won 7-2 and two in their last 10 games. They're kind of falling right now, and the Grizzlies needed to pounce on them and take those points, and so far, they're doing a great job of that. Yeah, Wichita's lost 10 of their last 11. The Grizzlies taking advantage here in the first period against an inexperienced goaltender and Roman Bazran, who's making his pro debut on Friday night. The Grizzlies took 58 shots on Justin Kappelmaster, who stopped 53 of them. He did a good job keeping the Thunder in the game. But the Grizzlies, who outshot the Thunder 13-2 to in overtime, got the victory 622 into the extra session. That Kansas City series is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to seeing live hockey at Maverick Center this weekend. Friday night's going to be an AFCU Friday where tickets start just $8, and you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. The Stanley Cup will be in the building on Saturday, March 11th. 
Um, you know, so get your tickets there to see the Stanley Cup live and in person here at Maverick Center as it's going to be here for the middle game of the set. It's affiliate night. As obviously, we're honoring the Colorado Avalanche, the Grizzlies NHL affiliate, who is the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. And Sunday is going to be a 3 o'clock start. That's going to be on Sunday, March 12th, exactly one week from now. Grizzlies will be here at Maverick Center taking on Kansas City. And Guy and I mentioned the importance of these standings. So after all, Kansas City right now with 58 points is in second place. And Kansas City has a record of 5-4-1 and one in their last 10 games. They've really done a good job sticking around the 500 mark all season long. So for the Grizzlies, you think about after the Kansas City series being on the road against Allen for a three-game set, and then hosting Cincinnati is one of the best teams in the Western Conference. In fact, Cincinnati right now is in first place all by themselves in the Western Conference. They have won... Um, or really over their last 12 games, Cincinnati is 10-0-1-1. So they've got a standing point in at least 12 straight games. So watch out for Cincinnati as they'll be at Maverick Center in late March. And so because of that, it's important for the Grizzlies to take care of business against teams like Wichita and Kansas City, who are clubs the Grizzlies are directly battling for a playoff spot against. When we come back, we'll hopefully have second period action over from Intrust Bank Arena as Utah leads 3 to nothing. On goals from Jordan Martell, Kyle Pouncey, and Tyler Penner. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back. Guy and I are here in the lobby at Maverick Center. Grizzlies are over at Intrust Bank Arena, as we'll have second period action shortly. Taron Pfizer, James Shearer, and Tyler Penner are each a plus two for Utah. Grizzlies went one for two on the power play, and Wichita is 0 for two. Um, Austin Crosley got an interference minor, 648 into the first. And it's good to see Austin Crosley as he played for the Grizzlies last year. He started the year with the Florida Everblades, and then recently, a couple weeks ago, was traded from Florida to Wichita. He wore number 16 on Friday night. Today, he's back to wearing number 10. He's played in four games, this being the fifth game in Wichita. He now has four penalty minutes and a plus-one rating. As Austin Crosley, actually, he's now an even in the plus-minus as he was a minus-one in the first period. And with the penalty, he picked up uh, there in the first period. He now is at the century mark, 100 penalty minutes this season. Crosley had 91 penalty minutes in 42 games for the Grizzlies last year where he had one goal and five assists. Crosley appeared in... 13 playoff games for the Grizzlies last year and had one assist. That's the only former Grizzly that's on the current Wichita roster. It looks like a pretty decent Sunday afternoon crowd. Utah really got a good first period performance from the rooster, Jordan Martell, 
and now has two points in three of his last four games. Martell was outstanding. Kyle Pouncey, a plus one. He had one goal, and that was Utah's second goal, 10-24, into the first period. And how about Dylan Fitz, who leads Utah with three shots. He has one assist, a plus one rating. And uh, you talk about guys, and it's, uh, they're, you know, coming into the month of February, and especially when the Grizzlies had injuries, you know, Zach Sekos, Dakota Raby at the start of February, Ford's really needed to step up. And there's been about three or four guys who have really stepped up big. Dakota Raby being one of them. He's got a point in seven of his last eight games coming into play tonight. He's scoreless here so far in the Wichita series, but he's looked good. Dylan Fitz, who had 12 points in his last eight games, and picked up another assist here in the first period. And he's been somebody that's really stepped up for the Grizzlies as of late. Yeah, Tyson. Dylan Fitz, he seems to be on a mission right now. I mean, he's just playing unreal hockey. And really, that's what the Grizzlies needed is for him to step up. He's been doing that. And he's the reason why the Grizzlies are winning as of late. Cam Strong, another four that's looked good for the Grizzlies. He had two shots in the first period. Strong has nine points in his last eight games. He's also a plus five. His last five games, he was an even in the plus minus in the first period. And the rooster, Jordan Martell. Now has seven points in his last four games, this being the fifth game. Um, you know, he's really stepped forward, two goals and five assists in his last four and a half games. As looks like the Wichita Thunder are taking the ice, and so are the Grizzlies here for the second period. But the guy you think about last week in the three-game set against Allen, not having Cameron Wright. Uh, Wright was scoreless in the first period and had one shot, but Cameron Wright leads the Grizzlies and all league rookies in shots with 189. And he's somebody over his last six games, just continues to produce Night in and night out, three assists on Friday, including an assist on the game winner, a plus two rating. And really think about when the Grizzlies were in the Eastern time zone, taking on Greenville, Savannah, and Orlando. Cameron Wright was probably as good as anybody in the league during that four-game stretch. Yeah, Tyson, Cameron Wright this season for the Grizzlies has been fantastic. I would argue that he's their MVP so far this season. He's just been lights out. And in his rookie year as that, uh, he's just been great. And really, the Grizzlies aren't the same team without him in the lineup. Same thing for Zach Seko. So you add those two guys back into the mix. And you mentioned Wright isn't on the score sheet yet tonight. But really, he's one of those guys that makes the players around him better. Even if he's not contributing on the score sheet, he just makes everybody around him uh, play at an elite level. So really uh, an underestimated uh, addition to the Grizzlies lineup. So it looks like we're about set to start second period action. With Tyler Penner getting his 10th goal of the season, there are now nine Grizzlies players to have 10 or more goals. Pfizer and Cameron Wright have 18 goals. Dylan Fitz has 14. And we got like, what, a six-way tie for 10, for 10 goals. We're fourth on the team. Brandon Cutler is currently in the AHL with the Colorado Eagles. Keaton Jamison, Dakota Raby, Zach Sekos, Johnny Walker, and now Tyler Penner each have 10 goals this season. That looks like a good crowd there. Interest Bank Arena is one of the nicer buildings in the league. It's one of those is about an NHL size arena. They've had the NCAA basketball tournament before there, and all the big events in the city of Wichita end up at that building. Looks like they're going to have a minute of madness over there to start the second period, which means everybody's just going to make an insane amount of noise during the first Minute of the second period, then whichever section appears to make the most noise is going to win a prize. As Grizzlies will be skating from left to right here in the second period. Draws one by Wichita. They'll throw it towards the near side, taken back by Kyle Pouncey. He'll feed it across Utah, skating from our left to our right. As Pouncey crosses center ice, he scored a goal in the first period. He played in five games in Wichita previously as the Thunder. Towards the far side near Utah's bench at center ice, Grizzlies gather it. Dakota Raby, right wing pass to right, tape to tape. He'll skate towards the right circle, dig a righty shot. Saved by Bazran. And the puck stays in play towards the right side, right with a shot, he scores. Cameron might right miss the first attempt. He didn't miss the second one as Cameron gets his 19th of the year. He's now got the club lead as Utah has extended the lead. And it's now a 4 nothing hockey game, 29 seconds into the second. Bazran thinks it hit off the protective netting. And he's arguing the case. Now the two referees and two linesmen are talking it over. Did the puck end up out of play after Wright's first shot? That would that would disallow the goal. They're talking it over right now. And it looks like they waved off the goal. No goal. And I'm guessing it's because the first shot that Wright took must have bounced out of play off the protective netting. That has to be it. So it doesn't look like we're going to go to video replay. Would have been really tough unless there's a camera angle that's looking at the protective netting. So no goal. Wright is still tied with Pfizer for the club lead with 18 goals. It's still three Utah three and Wichita nothing. But the Grizzlies had a couple good looks there to start the second period, in particular Cameron Wright. Draws in the right circle, and it's won by Wichita. They skate around their net. They'll throw it to the far side. Battling is right along the boards with Peter Bates. 
And the puck squirts towards the near side as Kyle Pouncey from the point dumps it to the corner. As Grizzlies behind the net, they try to feed it out in front to Seckos, but goes back to the point. Utah with a lefty shot that goes wide. I think that was taken by Bryson Martin. As Grizzlies towards the right corner, Cameron Wright gets pushed. He'll get it to Raby. I feeds it out in front to Seckos. Shot in the, uh, saved by Bazran. Puck still in play as Seko skates towards the right side, gets around a Thunder skater. Now he gets around a second skater. We get a whistle. Great job by Zach Seko. So I think he's drawn a penalty. Seko with his playmaking ability, and that forward line just dominated the first minute of play. Is going to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell is Quinn Preston, but Dakota Raby, Cameron Wright, and Zach Seko's absolutely dominated play for the Grizzlies in that first minute of the second period. Yeah, Tyson, dominated is an understatement. These guys were moving around like they had lightning in their skates. I mean, the Thunder just had themselves on their heels like they couldn't catch them. Cameron Wright almost has a goal there. Unfortunately, it gets disallowed, but right here is an opportunity for the Grizzlies to get it back. Utah leads 3 0. They're in the power play as Quinn Preston is in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Draw one by Wichita. The throw it to the far side. Jay Dickman clears it out. Puck goes back towards Trent Miner, who cuts it off along the far side. As the Grizzlies will start their attack from left to right. James Shearer skates down the middle. They'll feed it up top for Martin at center ice now to Jordan Martell. The rooster skates towards the right side, blows a tire in the corner. As Puck goes back towards Martell, he's towards his feet. Fitz gets it. He'll throw it up top. And somebody off the screen, Shearer, gets it back to the right side. As Utah tried to chip it back to Shearer, gets poked away. Wichita gets it and clears it out. As Shearer back in his own zone gets it. Jake Dickman's been great for Wichita on their penalty kill. 40 seconds into the second period power play for Utah as the rooster skates towards his left. He steps over the offensive line. He's already got a power play goal here so far. He'll throw it up top for Martin. Back to the right side. As we get a whistle, we get an interference penalty. As the puck ended up gliding towards Cam Strong on the right side. I think the penalty is going to be on the Grizzlies. It's going to be on Dylan Fitz. Two minutes for interference. Fitz can't believe the call, but he's in the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. So we're going to skate four on four for a minute, 11 seconds. And then after that, Wichita is going to have a short power play. 18.08 left in the second. Utah leads 3-0. Guy, it looked like the Grizzlies were starting to get things rolling there on the power play before Fitz got the penalty. Yeah, Tyson, and that's unfortunate for the Grizzlies. I really thought that they came out and played really hard to start this period. And they got a four-on-four situation and a little bit of a penalty to kill off after that. Uh, we have to watch out for the momentum that we saw after a penalty on Friday night's game. Wichita took the momentum back. The Grizzlies can't let that happen here today. Looks like Penner's taking the face off against Gavin Gould as we'll skate four on four for two minutes. Obviously, the ice opens up a little bit. Could be a chance for either team to score a goal. Wichita wins the draw. They throw it to the right side. They'll get it across towards Dominic Dockery. They'll feed it back to the high slot now to the right side. Wichita with a righty shot saved by Miner. And Trent holds on with 17.57 left in the second. Draw is going to stay in the Grizzlies. Um, Trent Miner saw 14 shots in the first period. He stopped them all. Miner, the Grizzlies shutout king, as he had seven shutouts last year to lead the league, and he's already got two this season. Uh, Miner leads the Grizzlies with nine victories this season. It's his 25th appearance here so far this year as the draw won by the Thunder. They're in the offensive zone. They'll feed it back to the right point. They'll dish it over to the left as the Thunder. Lefty shot by Dominic Dockery goes over the head of Miner and rolls towards the far boards. As Gould gets it taken away, as Grizzlies skate back towards Miner, now behind the net. 40 seconds left in the four-on-four. Four. Then after that, Wichita's going to have a power play. Near wing pass to Cameron Wright. He'll skate down the middle. Wright with great speed. He'll skate towards the left circle. He'll take a righty shot, saved by Bazran. Wright was looking for the rebound behind the net, and he overskated the puck. Wichita gets it back. They'll skate towards the near side. Now they cross center. Thunder backhanded into the Grizzlies zone. Miner behind his net will direct traffic. He'll give it over to Aaron Tho. 15 seconds left in the four-on-four. Four. Tho holds on to it. Pfizer cuts to his left. As Tho will feed it over towards Pfizer. He gets center ice. Pfizer, two-on-three, gains the offensive line. He'll drop it off for Raby. Raby over in the left point, across to Pfizer. Puck bounced off his stick. Now the Grizzlies are shorthanded. As Quinn Preston's out of the penalty box, he'll join the play. As Buck squirts towards a far circle, Wichita still has it, but they're in their own zone. Thunder will carry it out to center ice, three-on-two. Wichita gains the line, throws to Stanell. Left side, shot, saved by Miner. And Trent holds on. Mikel Stanell's the guy to watch out for from the Wichita side. He just took that shot from the left circle. That was saved by Miner. He leads the Thunder with 61 points this season, 25 goals and 36 assists. Draws going to be towards the near side. And even though the Grizzlies didn't score on that four-on-four -four situation, you know, 
Um, you know, it's going to be interesting here on in the abbreviated power play. Can Wichita find a way to get on the board? Utah leads 3-0, but the Thunder have had some good looks as of late. Wichita wins the faceoff as Cole McDonald will throw it to the left side for Bates. He'll feed it to the near goal line. Now Wichita around the net as Stanell back towards Bates up top for McDonald. He'll get it back to Bates. He's in the left side as he danced around. He'll throw it back up top for McDonald. Over to Bates on the left side. Take a lefty shot. Saved by Miner. Trent holds on, and the good thing for Trent here so far, he's not allowing many rebounds, not many second chances. That was a tough one for him to handle around shoulder high, and he was able to get it cleanly. Yeah, Tyson, this is an easy game to talk about what the Grizzlies are doing offensively, but we can't forget about Trent Miner. He's having himself a heck of a night so far. Really, you're right, you mentioned not allowing a lot of rebounds. He's doing a great job of, of uh, controlling the puck here. Wichita wins the draw. They're still on the power play for five seconds. Thunder to the right side. Gets it across for McDonald. Now up top, one-timer, and it's blocked. Out of the penalty box is Dylan Fitz. He'll join the plays. McDonald skates towards the near corner. He gets hit. And another Grizzly goes over there. Fitz chases down in the corner. Puck goes to the right point. Stanell lefty shot, and it's blocked by Shearer. Shearer's blocked a ton of shots. And McDonald, toe drag, left side, shot, and a score. As McDonald just kind of with a toe drag in the left circle, got the puck and lifted it over the right shoulder of Trent Miner. So Thunder get on the board with 15.52 left in the second. Even though Wichita didn't score on the power play, they got some momentum and some offensive zone time off of it. Boy, McDonald just kind of dragged the puck around Tyler Penner and got himself a good shooting angle in the slot. Good play by Cole McDonald, who arguably is Wichita's best defenseman. He certainly is the best offensive defenseman on their club. So Thunder get on the board, 15-52 left in the second as McDonald gets his sixth goal of the season. Wichita wins the draw. They skate towards the left circle. Austin Crosby with a lefty shot that goes wide. Puck goes to the right point. Back towards a far circle. Utah picks it off. They'll throw it out to center ice. Pass connects. Two on two. Grizzlies looking for a second pass. Shot. Saved by Bazran. As that could have been Jared Powers versus a pro. Puck behind the Wichita net. As Wichita drags down a Grizzly. And that was Austin Crosby dragging down a Grizz. This goes back to Wichita. No call either way. Thunder from center ice. Dump it in as they skate towards the near side. Thunder tried to center, but it hits the side of the net. Grizzlies come back the other way. Utah crosses center. Three on three. Grizz gained the line as they skate towards the right side. Simeone towards the near goal line. Takes a lefty shot. Saved by Bazran. In the area is Jared Power hacking away, but Bazran's covered up. 15-03 left in the second. Utah still leads 3-1. to one. On Wichita's goal, McDonald gets it with the assist going to Mikkel Stanell and Quinn Preston. For Stanell, it's his 37th assist of the year. And Quinn Preston gets his 28th assist of the year. Wichita is without one of their best forwards in Braden Watts. Actually, looks like they changed the assist to Bates and Stinnell. So forget Preston getting the assist. It's Bates and Stinnell with the assist. Draws in the right circle of the Thunder Zone. 15.03 left in the second. As a draw taken by Zach Sekos and one by Sekos. Is Aaron though High slot, skates towards his left, takes a shot that's blocked. Cameron right behind the net, tries to get to Raby. Right gets held up along the far side, no call. As Wichita, pretty physical team. Connor Walters holds up right. Now Wichita gets the puck. Thunder across center ice, they'll feed it off the near wing boards. Chasing after it's Dominic Dockery. He gets in the left point, feeds it across. Puck bounced off the stick of Cameron right and rolls deeper in the grizzly zone. This is towards the end wall. Dickman doesn't get hit, but he loses the puck. As Dickman battles with Aaron Tho. Raby skates over there to cut him off. Dickman, who's a big guy, gets held up by Tho. Goes back to the Grizzlies. As right over to Sekos, who carries it out to center ice left wing. Sekos dishes out to the right side. Pass behind Cameron Wright. And the puck rolls towards the near corner. Wichita gets it. Grizzlies at the end of their shift. 14-14 and counting left in the second. Utah leads 3-1. to one. Wichita spreads the ice. Quinn Preston. He skates towards his right. He doesn't have the puck because the puck feeds towards the near side. And now it goes to Stanell. He's got good speed. He crosses center ice and chips it in. Stanell towards the end wall. Cuts in front of Connor McDonald. They'll feed it to the far circle. Utah picks it off. Grizz will move it out to center ice. Darren Pfizer, two on two. He'll skate towards the left circle. I tried to center it, and it bounced off the skate of a Thunder skater who was diving towards the crease to deny the pass. Grizzlies now to the right side. Look to the center at the Pfizer. He collides with Stanell and loses the puck. Wichita will carry it out to center ice. Left wing pass to McDonald. He'll skate towards the near wing boards. He's back towards the corner. He gets pushed by the other McDonald, and that's the Grizzlies' captain, Connor. Cole McDonald's also the captain for Wichita. Over to the right side, Thunder bouncing off the end boards as Bryson Martin battles. So is Connor McDonald as 
Quinn Preston throws it back towards the far side. Now it's the right point over across. Now the high slot, Stanell, one-timer, and he fanned on it. And his stick didn't break, but it kind of had that same effect. The puck rolls towards Grizzlies territory. And make that Thunder territory. McDonald will ricochet off the near boards. And Allen moves it ahead. Kyle Rhodes over to Quinn Preston. Preston gets it across, but cutting in front's Cam Strong as the pass didn't connect. Grizzlies cross center ice. The Rooster two on two. Steps over the line. Skates towards his right. He'll take a righty shot that goes wide. As the puck goes back to Wichita. Rhodes with an outlet pass to center. Now left wing towards number 20, Mark Lewiski. Back towards number 42, Brett Van Oss. will take a shot that's wide. Lewiski back behind the net for Cameron Huff, who was number 55 on Friday. He's wearing number 14. He battles along the boards with Shearer. Now Pouncey holds up a thunder skater in the far corner. It's Wichita battles in the offensive zone. Utah takes it away. Riz moving out to center. Two on three. As the Grizzlies towards the left side get, get it taken away. Wichita wants to pick up the transition game. Out to center ice. Fitz moves it back towards... Martell, Martell, and Pouncey in the area. Grizzlies enter the offensive zone. So they're back towards the far side in the point. Jared Power throws it towards the corner. It's picked off by Wichita. And Gavin Gould, who loses it. As Grizzlies trying to get it back to throw up top, Wichita throws it back to center. Though gets it. Cameron Huff skates around him. He gets the puck in the Utah zone. Huff around Utah's now. I try to center it out to Bates. Pass behind him. Now Wichita with a shot and they score. But it looked like the centering pass didn't connect. And then another Thunder skater. Came in and put the puck in the back of the net. It looks like it's Gavin Gould getting his second goal of the season. And both the Gould's goals have come against the Grizzlies. He had one goal for Allen, and that came against Utah. And now Gould has cut into the Utah lead some more. It's a 3-2 to two game. And Gavin Gould just kind of skated down the middle, and the puck ended up gliding towards him, and he was able to put it away. And if you're the Grizzlies, you want to make sure you stop the momentum right here, right now. You don't want a repeat of the last Grizzlies home game against Allen. Yeah, Tyson, that's exactly right. And that's just one of those plays where the Thunder work it down low, able to move it back up into the slot. And nobody's able to get on a stick on it for the Grizzlies. Now it's a 3-2 game. Utah has the puck back. Dakota Raby skates down the middle. Backhand shot saved by Bazran. Puck goes towards the near wing boards right over there along with Raby. They both get held up as the Thunder spin it back around the wall. As Wichita over in the corner, but it's Utah with the puck there on the offensive end. Cameron right, left wing shot saved by Bazran. Rebound goes out to the left side. Thunder lift it high into the air. McDonald will skate back towards Trent Minor, and the arm is raised by the linesman as icing is called on the Thunder. 11 17 left in the second. Utah led three to nothing after one period, but the Thunder have scored two unanswered here in the second period as Gavin Gould got a second of the year. Both goals have come against the Grizzlies with two separate teams. He scored earlier in the year when he was a member of the Allen Americans. Cole McDonald and Gavin Gould with the Thunder goals. As we're about halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. Grizzlies have it in the offensive end as Jamison throws up top to Martin across to Pouncey. Pouncey in the right point feeds it across to Martin who fakes a shot, gets it back to Pouncey. Pouncey will throw it towards the left side for Fitz. And the pass didn't connect. The whistle blows. And even 11 minutes left in the second period. Utah leads 3-2. to two. Looks like there's a timeout on the ice. We're back in one minute. It's the Grizzlies 3 and the Thunder 2 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new Fiend to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand. So you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best. Day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Grizzlies with an offensive zone draw. Utah leads 3-2. to two. Utah scored three goals in the first period. Wichita's answer with two here in the second. Off the draw, Pfizer shot from the left wing, and it's blocked. As Wichita back towards the near side, their goaltender is making his pro debut. Roman Bazran 
As the Thunder out to center ice, they skate from right to left. As chipping in is Mikkel Stanell, their leading scorer this year. Bryce Martin throws to the far side. We're about halfway through the scheduled 60 minutes. Thunder towards the left point, couldn't keep it in. Or could they? Cole McDonald to the blue line, drives around the boards, out to the right side, lefty shot, saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to Utah. As Grizz skate around their net, they'll throw it to Kyle Pouncey. It lifts out to the left point. Cole McDonald literally kicks it to the right side. Thunder with a lefty shot, and it's blocked in the slot. Now, Thunder player going down, takes a righty shot, and it goes wide. No penalty on the play as the Grizzlies cross center. Taron Pfizer, two on two, steps over the blue line, drops off for Fitz. Fitz with a shot, saved, saved by Bazran. And Wichita will throw it out to center ice. Grizzlies get it back. As Utah skating from left to right, as Connor McDonald out to neutral ice, skates towards his left. McDonald. Now, button hooks into the Grizzly zone. He'll skate towards the near side. As he'll chip it ahead. Pass connects to Dylan Fitz. He's in the Thunder zone. Back towards Cam Strong in the corner. Strong feeds it towards the middle. Grizzlies get it. Skate in. Though shot saved by Bazran. As Though got a little bit too close towards the net. Now, Bazran, does he covered it up? Looks like he has. As there's 9.41 left in the second period. Utah leads 3-2. to two. And we got another timeout. We're back in 30 seconds. On the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Utah 3, Wichita 2. Utah took a 3 0 lead in the first period as Jordan Martell, Kyle Pouncey, and Tyler Penner found the back of the net. Wichita scored 4 8 into the second. Cole McDonald, his sixth of the season. Stanell and Preston with the assist, and Gavin Gould got his second goal of the season, 8 10 in. Brett Van Oss and Cameron Huff with the assist. And, guy, Grizzlies had an outstanding first period. They're just trying to make sure they. They get the momentum back after Wichita scored two unanswered here in the first segment of play in the second period. Yeah, Tyson, the key is the momentum. The Grizzlies had a fantastic first period. They just need to find a way to stop the bleeding now and recapture what they had in the first. Wichita wins the faceoff, and they dump it into the Grizzlies zone. Big time hit over in the near corner as the Grizzlies out towards center ice, but Wichita chases after it. Zach Hoffman, number six, will feed it towards the near side to Austin Crosley, who moves it ahead to number 20, Mark Lewiski, who dumps it in from center ice. Over towards the right corner, Peter Bates in the area as he delivers a hit. Now the Grizzlies gather the puck as, as Jordan Martell, the rooster, skates around one defender, skates to the left circle, takes a shot, saved by Bazran. But boy, Jordan Martell looks like the Grizzlies' best player out there as he created a good scoring chance out of nothing. And after the draw and after the whistle, Mark Lewiski puts Cam Strong in a headlock. Lewiski got in a fight with Connor McDonald in the second period last night, and Martell crashed into the end boards. And I like calling Lee a lot, but we don't like seeing him on these remote feeds or any game, for that matter, on the ice because that means a Grizzlies player is hurt. And it looked like a Grizzly was down, and it's Jordan Martell who's on his backside, and he's being checked over by the Grizzlies trainer, Colin Lee. Nine minutes, nine seconds left in the second, and hopefully the Rooster's okay because he's played outstanding hockey. Yeah, Tyson, that, you hate to see that for anybody but right now it's the rooster jordan martell and you just hope that he's going to be okay it looks like he's in some pain he crashed into those boards a bit hard he's having himself a heck of a day so far two points so far uh so you hope that he's going to be able to shake this one off i think what you like to see is you like to see players who can create their own shot out of nothing and jordan martell a couple times the goal in the first period as he skates towards the bench looks like he's going to walk to the locker room he's limping a little bit there's the equipment manager mason whalen who takes the stick away from him Obviously, we'll keep an update if we see Martell back on the ice. There's absolutely no way from one time zone away to know anything except for whether we see him on the ice again. Seco's to take the draw. It's his third game of the 2023 calendar year. He scored the game winner on Friday. Wright's out there along with Raby as down the middle. Seco's with a one-timer goes wide after Utah won the faceoff. Now, Raby right side shot saved by Bazran, who kicks it back towards the near corner. Raby gets hit. Right spins along the boards, left point. Grizzlies keep it in. James Sure collides with a Thunder skater. Play starting to get physical here as Raby centers it. Wichita picks it off out in front of the net. Now they skate from right to left. Gavin Gould dumps it in as he bounced off his stick at neutral ice. He chases after it. He collides with Shear along the boards. 
Now towards the far circle, Grizzlies will lift it out to the point. Zach Sekos will skate out of the zone to neutralize. He'll chip it across the right for Pouncey. Kyle steps over the line, gets to Raby near the boards. He'll feed it up top and out to the left side as Grizzlies get over to Sekos. One-timer, and it's blocked. As the puck goes out to center ice, Grizzlies chase after it. Raby has it. As he's at neutralize, he's near the boards. Raby trying to locate it as he gets held up by Jay Dickman. As now at center ice, Cameron Wright chips it across. Grizzlies now in their own zone. Thunder sneaking a line change about eight minutes left in the second period. Pass head is picked off of the Wichita blue line. Thunder cross center. They'll chip it off the near boards. As Stanell couldn't reach it, Jamison throws it back to center. Raby battles near the center, er, center ice area. Along the near boards, near the scores table. Now back to the right circle. Thunder step over the blue line. They'll chip it over to the high slot. Preston gets it. He swings and misses. Puck near his ankles as he falls down. Utah chips to center ice. Pfizer in the area. He'll skate towards his left. He's now in the high slot. He'll take a righty shot and it's blocked. McDonald to the right side. Gets it back to Pfizer. He takes a shot and it's blocked by number 24, Cole Connor Walters. As the Grizzlies skate around the net. Back towards Martin. He'll chip it over to the left side. Pfizer one-timer. They didn't get much on it. And he blows a tire. So he'll skate off the ice. As the Thunder cross center ice. They thought they did and dump it in. Icing is called, though, with 7-12 left in the second. Boy, Taron Pfizer had a good look from the left side. Fanned on it a little bit. And, you know, hitting has really started to pick up over the last three minutes or so as Utah still leads 3-2. to two. Yeah, Tyson, this game has gotten a little bit more physical since the last whistle, but I do like that last shift for the Grizzlies. I think that was their best shift in the last couple of minutes or so, really trying to get that momentum back. Well, they just showed them a replay of Jordan Martell crashing. He crashed hard into the boards. And he's out of the game. Hopefully he'll be back in soon, but he crashed the boards pretty hard. Wichita gets a two-on-two. They step over, over the line, right side. Thunder. Skate back towards the high slot. Lefty shot, and it's blocked about five feet in front of Miner. As Penner was in the area, he'll throw it to the near side. Grizzly skate from left to right. Less than seven minutes left in the second period. Pass to center ice. Picked off by Austin Crosley. He'll throw it to the far side. Grizzlies chip it ahead, but it bounces back to Connor McDonald, who will throw it around Utah's net for Bryson Martin. Martin has already got an assist tonight. Skates towards the right side. Steps over the line as Martin chip loses the puck. As Wichita crosses center ice, two on three. Cameron Huff skates towards the left circle, takes a lefty shot. Saved by Miner in the butterfly position. Grizzlies get the rebound. Utah tried to clear it out and fanned on it. Huff throws it back to the point for Brett Van Oss. He'll take a lefty shot, saved by Miner. And the puck flies out of play with 622 left in the second. Actually, it was just a glove save by Miner. He held on. So both teams make a line change, but Wichita's Established some offense his own time here over, over the last few minutes. Yeah, Tyson, they have. And I think for the Grizzlies, I think it starts with winning these faceoffs, getting that possession back, and then taking it the other way. The Grizzlies did a great job of doing that in the first period. Uh, they need to start doing that now to get that momentum back. Utah, Utah's taken 10 shots in the second period. Wichita's taken nine. Draws in the near circle as Utah leads three to two. Wichita wins the faceoff, but Mark Lewiski couldn't get a shot off. Lewiski with a big-time hit on Sekos. Now Sekos towards the near side, avoids a check. Now Lewiski lights up Sekos again. Puck towards the end boards. Grizzlies get it. James Shear moves ahead to Sekos, who skates down the middle. Right wing pass to right. He'll throw it to the left side for Raby. Back to Shear. He'll take a lefty shot. He scores! James Shear with, for, with a blast from the slot has made it a 4-2 game. There's an even six minutes left in the second. Grizzlies got an odd man rush and converted on it. Big time play by James Shearer is trailing the play. And he was all alone as he got the puck and fired a lefty blast past Roman Bazran. So Grizzlies get some momentum back after Wichita scored two unanswered as James Shear gets his fourth of the year. Yeah, Tyson, what a great play by the Grizzlies to go from end to end, get that puck in your own zone, and then go on the rush the other way. Couldn't have drawn up any better. So Grizzlies lead four to two. As they win the faceoff, Aaron Tho back in his own zone. He'll move it ahead as he throws it down the middle. It looks like it's going to be icing on the Grizzlies. The pass was incomplete. He was looking for somebody near the Wichita blue line. Sure with the goal, Raby and Wright with the assist. So Dakota Raby, who had a seven-game point scoring streak end on Friday, he picks up an assist. He now has a point in eight of his last nine games. And Cameron Wright gets an assist, and that is his... 24th assist of the season. Because of that, he now has 42 points this season, which now breaks a tie with Andrew Nelson for the club lead. Utah wins the draw. Aaron Tho skates behind his own net. Now ahead to Terran Pfizer in the left wing. He gets the puck. He's in the left circle of the, of the attack zone. Back towards Jamison, who feeds it across to Shearer. 
Sure, over in the high slot, takes a lefty shot, and it goes wide. Rebound off the end wall boards. It's taken by Wichita. Thunder throw it out to center ice, two on three. Thunder skate in as Dickman feeds it to the right side for Gavin Gould, who already has a goal tonight. He avoids a check as the Thunder to the left side, skates towards the right, drops it off for Dockery. Dockery around the boards, goes back to the right side, fits in the area. The puck goes out to center ice. As Mark Lewiski gets it, they'll throw it back to Dockery, who's 6'2", 185 pounds. He's got eight points this season. Grizzlies make a line change, five minutes and counting left in the second. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Up ahead for Dickman, he couldn't handle it. As the Grizzlies looking for Strong out near the Wichita blue line, it gets poked back towards center ice. Now Martell back to Strong. Strong skates towards the left side, blows the tire, and yes, Jordan Martell's back out there, maybe missed one shift. As Wichita towards the near side will lift it out to center. It bounces off a Grizzly at center, goes back to Tyler Penner. He skates in, drops off for Martell, back to Strong, trying to get over to Martell, passes wide and goes out to center. Martell skates after the puck near the Grizzlies bench, but Wichita gets there first. Across towards Dockery. They'll move it out into Grizzlies territory. Wichita steps over the blue line. They skate towards the corner. Quinn Preston is in a one-on-one battle in the corner with Kyle Pouncey. Pouncey pokes it away as the puck rolls towards Stanell. Skate towards the left circle. Takes a lefty shot that goes wide. Puck glides towards the right point. Wichita round towards the right corner. Now the Thunder around the net. They're on the near side. As Bates. Skeets around the net. Peter's his first name. He's being shadowed by Zach Sekos. As Bates loses his stick, now behind the net, Bates gets it back. He's got the puck as it trickles towards the near circle. Utah takes it away. Tyler Penner moves ahead to center ice. He gets blasted at center, gets held up along the right wing. As Wichita gets hit by Penner. Penner holds up a Wichita stick. The puck goes back to neutral ice. Thunder skate back in. As Crosley avoids a check of Raby as the puck rolls around behind Miner's net. Out towards the corner, McDonald shadowing, but Wichita gets the puck. They'll throw it back to the right side. Now across to Crosley. He'll take a lefty shot, and it's blocked. The Thunder player goes down in the slot. They get back slowly. Grizzlies clear it out to center. They have the puck. Raby skates over the blue line, delayed offside. He lets Wichita take it. As Zach Hoffman, left side, shot, kick saved by Miner. Rebound Cameron Wright will pitch forking out to center as the puck rolls into the Thunder zone. Cole McDonald moves it ahead. Grizzlies cross center. As Sekos gets over to Cameron Wright, but we get a whistle. I think the Grizzlies got caught with too many men on the ice. They're trying to make a line change and looked like one of the linesmen pointed six. So I think it's too many men on the ice. Zach Kaufman pushes Cameron Wright near the bench area. But for some reason, it seems like everybody wants to go after Cameron Wright. Zach Kaufman, is he going to get a penalty for that? And I probably should. Looks like the referee's pointing towards Zach Kaufman. He's going to get a penalty for pushing Cameron Wright after the whistle. I think I saw one of the officials signal too many men on the ice. As Kelly Bent went over there to confront Cameron Wright, and then Zach Kaufman went over there, pushed Wright, and looks like the referee spotted it, and he told Zach Kaufman to go to the penalty box. I think there was an initial call for too many men as Utah leads 4-2 to two with three minutes and six seconds left in the second period. Interesting action over there. At Interest Bank Arena. Yeah, Tyson, really interesting here. And you think about if that was the too many men on the ice penalty for the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies now, instead of going to the penalty kill, would go to the four-on-four four because of this penalty to Hoffman. And they they call Cameron Wright the rat for a reason. He's able to draw a penalty here. Big, big play here for the Grizzlies. So it looks like we're seeing people do the Macarena. Unfortunately, we can't tell you who's on the power player right now, but we had a few penalties. There's at least one player, maybe two, in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Have you or someone you know been charged with a DUI? Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious. And you need great attorneys on your first line. Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw away or disregard this letter. Call and get Utah's best DUI defense team. Rogers and Russell. I think I got one of those letters and I got it framed. I'm not I'm not disregarding that letter. I'm going to make sure to put it to use if I ever need to. Hoffman's going to have to get a penalty. Uh, it looked like, uh, you know, originally there was too many men on the ice. We're trying to figure out, you know, what kind of situation we got when we come back with 306 left. Yeah, Tyson, not really sure what's going on right here. We're, st- we're still trying to figure that out. And it seems like the referees are too. But one thing I know is that Zach Hoffman definitely disregarded that letter. He, <laughs> he definitely got it and chucked it straight in the trash because he's probably going to the Rogers and Russell legal solution holding cell. Now, did they think Cameron Wright dove there? It looks like Wright's going to get a penalty. Well, it must have been something off the screen. Obviously, we don't get to see everything. 
Looks like Wichita gets a power play. Christian Simeone's in the box. Looks like he's the lawyer for Cameron Wright. There's one guy in the box for Wichita. And so it looks like we're skating five on four. Wichita's got a two-minute power play. Three minutes, six seconds left in the second. When we find out what rules the Grizzlies broke, we'll let, him, we'll let you know. Wichita wins the draw. They're over to the right side. Cole McDonald's quarterbacking this thing. He's got the puck in the high slot. He'll throw it back to the far side. As Bates throws it back to McDonald, he's in the right point. They'll move it ahead. It's a puck bounced off of Brett Van Oss's stick. Quinn Preston over there skates towards the corner. Grizzlies hack away. Puck goes back to McDonald. He'll throw it over to Stinell. Slot shot, and it's blocked by Sekos, who loses a stick. It's Quinn Preston on the near side. He's in the left circle up top for Stinell. Back to Preston. Preston gets around Connor McDonald. Backhand shot saved by Miner. Rebound goes to Jake Dickman out in front. Bates shot saved by Miner. Grizzlies trying to clear it out. Stanell keeps it in. Right side, the Thunder. Throw it up top for McDonald. He'll feed it to the left side for Stanell. He fakes a shot. Now he takes another one, and it goes wide. He tried to go glove side on Miner. Right side, Thunder get it. They try to chip it across. Grizzlies dive and clear it out to center. Great defensive play by the Grizzlies. Now taking away is Connor McDonald. He'll skate towards the right circle. Takes a righty shot. Saved by Bazran. As Jamison towards the far corner, gets held up by Cole McDonald. Thunder regained the puck, 50 seconds left in the power play. Less than two minutes left in the second period. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Grizzlies get it at new tries and dump it back in on Bazran, who plays behind his net. As Grizzlies made a line change, Cam Strong and Tyler Penner out there. As the Thunder will cross center ice left wing. Gavin Gould gains the line. He's getting a good playing time. Throws to Lewinsky. Shot saved by Miner. Rebound shot goes wide. Now, Gavin Gould, right side, surveys. as He's just outside the circle, chips out in front to the whiskey. He'll take a shot, saved by Miner. Rebound goes to Cam Strong, and he'll clear it out. 15 seconds left in the Thunder power play. Looks like it's going to be another Utah disaster cleanup, successful penalty kill. As Kyle Rhodes skates down the middle, five seconds left in the power play. He'll cross center ice. Now Rhodes gains the line, throws to his left. And now Lewiski, lefty shot, glove saved by Miner. Out of the penalty box, we think of Simeone representing Cameron Wright as there's 104 left in the second period clock. And it's a Utah disaster cleanup, successful penalty kill. It looks like Simeone was serving the bench minor for too many men on the ice. And so that was on Utah. Then Cameron Wright and Zach Hoffman each got matching roughing minors. Now, maybe Wright did something that we didn't see that was off the screen that he did to earn the two minutes. Otherwise, that was not, you know, uh, you know, we don't really know. As Wichita wins the draw, they're in the offensive zone. Back towards the right side for Connor Walters. He'll feed it behind Utah's net. Gold looking for it, but Utah drifts it towards Dylan Fitz. He tries to locate it and does in the near corner. As the puck goes back to the far side, as the Grizzlies will chip it out to center. As now the Grizzlies back in their own zone with the puck. As Aaron Tho towards the near side, across. Now back to Tho. He tried to locate it, but the pass was well hot. As it goes behind him, as the Grizzlies just spun it around the boards. Utah still has a puck in their own zone. 30 seconds left. Pfizer listening out to center ice. Pitts has a bounce off of him as it goes towards the near side. Foot race towards the near boards. Aaron Thoe wins it against Walters. Now, Taron Pfizer gets tripped up as he stepped over the offensive line. Fitz takes over the puck. Slot shot. Glove saved by Bazran. And a call is going to be made as Taron Pfizer drew a tripping penalty with 14.2 seconds left in the second period. Utah leads 4-2, to and they're going to be on the power play. And Taron Pfizer's speed drew the tripping penalty as Grizz will be on the man advantage here. Most of it's going to start the third period. As skating to the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell is Jake Wallen. But a shorthanded goal on Friday night. He gets two minutes for tripping. Time of penalty, 19 minutes and 56 seconds into the second period. Well, this is a big chance here for the Grizzlies. Only 14 seconds left to go in the second period here. But you talk about uh, leading with the momentum in the third period. That could be huge for the Grizzlies there. Draw is going to be taken by Keaton Jamison. As he wins the draw, Pfizer throws it up top for Sekos. Back to Pfizer along the near wing boards. Over to Ray Beep. He's behind the net. I tried to chip it out in front to Jamison. Wichita takes it away. Three seconds left in the period. Pfizer feeds it to the right circle, but that will do it for 40 minutes over at Intrust Bank Arena. Utah led 3-0 after one period. Cole McDonald and Gavin Gould scored in the first eight minutes and 10 seconds of the second period. James Shearer responded, and even 14 minutes into the second with his fourth of the season, Ray being right gained the assist. And good job by Trent Miner in net. He has stopped 25 of 27. 
Roman Bazrad, the Wichita goaltender, has stopped 29 of 33. We'll come back and recap the first two periods of play as Utah is up 4-2. to two. They've got a record of 19-1 and one when leading after two periods this season. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Fiend to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Second intermission over at Interest Bank Arena. Utah leads 4-2. to two. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Krenz, and we're hanging out at the lobby at Maverick Center. As Utah led 3-0 after one period, the rooster Jordan Martell got the Optum first goal of the game, 8-23 in his eighth of the season. Bryson Martin and the goaltender, Trent Miner, with the assist. In fact, Trent Miner's got a point in two straight games as he had an assist on Utah's game winner in overtime on Friday. So Trent Miner's got four assists this season, and for Bryson Martin, it's his, hit, his sixth assist of the year. It's Martin's 41st game of the year. Kyle Pouncey, two minutes and one second later, 10-24 in, scored a second of the year as he scored from the right circle. James Schur and Dylan Fitz with the assist. We imagine that Tyler Penner scored the most amazing-looking goal in Utah Grizzlies history. Well, truth be told, we never saw it, but he scored 11-16 in. Now, maybe we should do a contest. You know, we got the opt-in first goal of the game. If you saw the Tyler Penner goal, we want to see your best description on the YouTube comment section. <laughs> Give your description. How did Tyler Penner score? Martel got the assist, you know, and if you want to make it a fish story, if you want to really elaborate and exaggerate, go ahead and do it. We want to know how Tyler Penner scored or if Tyler Penner scored. We just know you got his 10th of the year. Um, you know, if you, if you saw the goal, let us know how he scored. Did he skate around two people, jumped over another one, got in front of the net and then scored? Did, you know, Martel throw up behind his back? Penner got it. They twirled the stick around, went above, went above his head, went behind the net, and then did the Michigan move and then scored that way. I mean, you can get as creative as you want. We just want to know how Tyler Penner scored 11-16 into the third period. Guy will be judging, and he'll pick out a winner after the game, and the winner will get a free two-liter Dr. Pepper it's sitting in my fridge right now. So come up with your best story as to how Tyler Penner scored that goal to give Utah a 3 nothing lead. Utah led 3-0 after one. Grizzlies outshot the Thunder 21-14 in the first period. Shots are pretty close to even in the second. Wichita had 14 shots. Utah had 13. Thunder got on the board 408 in as Cole McDonald got his sixth of the season. It wasn't a power play goal, but the power play that Wichita had after you know Dylan Fitz got the interference minor uh, kind of established that as they scored 16 seconds after the power play ended, but the puck stayed in the offensive zone even after Fitz came out of the penalty box. So even though they didn't score on the power play, it was kind of that same sequence of events that led to McDonald's goal 408 in. 
Gavin Gould cut into the Grizzlies lead some more. As he scored eight minutes, 10 seconds into the second. Brett Van Oss and Cameron Huff with the assist. I want to call him Charlie Huff. You see a C. Huff in there. You think about the old knuckleball pitcher. Actually started the first game, regular season game in the history of the Florida Marlins. Fun fact. So C. Huff, every time I see him, I'm thinking about the knuckleball pitcher, Charlie Huff. But Cameron, Cameron Huff, who wore number 55 on Friday in the Star Wars specialty jerseys, he's got a point in back-to-back games as he got an assist in the Gavin Gould goal, 8-10 into the second. At that point, you're kind of wondering, you know, can the Grizzlies find a way to close the momentum and get it back on their side? Well, the Grizzlies scored 14 minutes, exactly 14 minutes into the second period. And it was really off an odd man rush. You know, it was like the Grizzlies had Sekos over there, Wright, Raby, and Raby and Wright got the assist on Shearer's goals. He was just all alone down the middle, and it looked like kind of a three-on-two with Shearer trailing the play. And Shearer got the puck. He was all alone. Remember, he had a two-goal game in the Grizzlies' last homestand, and James Shearer playing some good hockey is a plus two. And Shearer's got a multiple-point game. He has one goal and one assist as that's Utah's fourth goal that was scored 14 minutes into the second period as Utah leads 4-2. to two. And, Guy, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, the job that Trent Miner did there later in the second period when the score was still 3-2, to two, keeping the Grizzlies in it, then obviously the big insurance goal by Shearer. Uh, there was a lot of good performances out there by the Grizzlies in the second period. We did see Jordan Martel crash to the boards. Luckily, it didn't look like he missed a shift. He got back out there a couple minutes later. Yeah, it's really good to see the Rooster getting back into the game. Uh, good. That's a good sign for the Grizzlies. He's been playing excellent. Uh, and as for the Grizzlies in this game, I think in that last weekend series against Allen, where they went down three nothing, there was some good to come out of that because the Grizzlies learned their lesson after blowing a three nothing lead against Allen. They almost blow a three nothing lead here. The Grizzlies are able to regain the momentum and turn the tie back in their favor. And now they go into the second intermission with a four two lead. It's four two Grizzlies. Now you think about standings points. I think the Grizzlies would be rooting for Idaho to defeat Kansas City. After all, Idaho, with a win today, can clinch a playoff spot. I think Idaho can also clinch a playoff spot if the Grizzlies lose. Think about it. It's March 5th, and the and Idaho can already clinch a playoff spot. They're probably going to be the one seed. And because of that, I think you're rooting for Idaho to win against Kansas City. But in the second intermission over at Cable Dahmer Arena, Kansas City leads 2-0 in front of a crowd of 2,558. Jake McLaughlin and Nick Pastajov have the Kansas City goals. Dylan Kelly is a net for Kansas City, and he has stopped all 22 shots he has seen. Adam Schill has started for Idaho, and he has saved 11 of 13. Grizzlies obviously watching what the Kansas City Mavericks do, because that's going to be the Grizzlies' opponent this upcoming weekend here at Mavericks Center. It's going to be a big three-game series, kind of a baseball style, three games in three days with the Sunday game being an afternoon contest. Don't forget the Grizzlies' next game will be an AFCU Friday. That's going to be Friday, March 10th, as they take on the Kansas City Mavericks in the series opener. And with every every, every with every AFCU Friday, easy for me to say, how about this deal? $8. Tickets start just $8 when you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Mavericks Center box office. What a deal. And then think about Saturday, six days from now. He's going to be in town. Lord Stanley. That's right. The Stanley Cup is going to be here at Maverick Center six days from now. Guy, you, you got to get a picture with the Stanley Cup. I know you're a Pittsburgh Penguins fan. See if you can find the names of the Penguins over there. You can even look back to the Penguins, two Stanley Cups in 1991 and 92 with Yager and Mario Lemieux and company over there. You know, I'm going to be looking for some Stanley Cup names myself on Saturday. That's going to be a lot of fun. The Stanley Cup will be in the building. Six days from now, it's going to be affiliate night as the Grizzlies are honoring the 2022 Stanley Cup champion, Colorado Avalanche. Then on Sunday at 3 o'clock is going to be the series finale. During the second period will be the NCAA selection show. So, Guy, you're going to have to fill me in as to who's going to be those teams. we got to find a way to fill out our bracket. And Mm -hmm. so I've been watching a little bit of college basketball, and I want to win. You know, I want to win the the office bracket this season. There's no doubt I'm I'm not going to be denied. I know there's going to be a lot of upsets, but you and I are going to have to win that thing. But you're going to have to pay attention to that Sunday game, second period, to let us know who's going to be in the tournament if any local teams get in there. But I'm really looking forward to seeing the Cup being here on Saturday. Get to see it up close and personal. Get to see the individual names on there. It's the best trophy in sports by a wide margin. I'm really looking forward to seeing it here. Yeah, Tyson, I don't think words can describe the Stanley Cup. I think that's one of those things where you have to see it for yourself. And so I'm really excited to get a chance to see it for myself. And you should be, too. If you're in the area, come down to Maverick Center on the 11th to not only see the Cup, but 
see the Grizzlies play off against, uh, play against the Kansas City Mavericks in a push for the playoffs because the Grizzlies need to win those games. Those are going to be huge games going down the stretch. But you talk about the Stanley Cup and just the names are on. I mean, I can look at guys on my favorite team, but I mean, you got to look at all the other names. We're going to have to go name hunting and find out you know, what's the most interesting name on the Stanley Cups. Maybe some guys, maybe some fourth liners. Maybe some guys that transition from a fourth line role or something and turn into a GM that you see later on the cup. Uh, really interesting. I know Kevin Shovel Dayoff is on one of these Turner Cups over here for the Grizzlies. Now he's general manager of the Winnipeg Jets. So it just goes to show you can find your name on here and you can find your name on the Stanley Cup. It's just crazy. So I'll, I'm, I'm going to have to go name hunting once we see it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I know if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, you have to look really hard. Now, I think oh. they take some names off the cup, but you know, as time passes on, I don't want to tell Maple Leafs joke, joke just saying it's been a long time. I think the Maple Leafs might actually do something there. Picking up O'Reilly certainly is big for them. But, uh, you know, think about the Avalanche and what they've done for the Grizzlies over the last four years. This is the fifth year of the Grizzlies Avalanche partnership, and it's been consistent wins. You know, you think about the Avalanche being a consistent winner over the last half decades. Their AHL affiliate, the Colorado Eagles, have been consistent winners. Even though the Grizzlies have had their ups and downs this year, the Grizzlies have been consistent winners in their time as an affiliate with the Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, it's really been a great partnership for the Grizzlies in the Avalanche. As far as the Avalanche uh, themselves, they seem to be turning it around and making a push for a, a back-to-back Stanley Cup appearance. So uh, good things here for uh, the partnership between the Avalanche and the Grizzlies. And obviously some injuries have piled up for the Avalanche and even the Eagles. And because of that, you know, we haven't gotten nearly the help that we've gotten in previous years. But you think about the AHL contract guys really factoring in Cameron Wright, Taron Pfizer, Zach Sekos. I mean, I think when you look at what Sekos has done and Wright, I mean, you think about the second period as we revert back to the Grizzlies and Thunder game. You know, the Grizzlies have gotten really good help. And, you know, Trent Miners on an NHL entry level deal. And one of the fun things about the Stanley Cup run, uh, the Avalanche won in overtime. I think it was their third victory in the Stanley Cup finals. And, they're walking out, you know, they're, they're, they're showing a shot. There's like six guys in a suit, and the Avalanche are walking towards the locker room. And you can see over on the far side to the right of a TV screen, it's like, wait a minute, that's Trent Minor right over there. As he was part of that Stanley Cup run. I think he saw every game except for the clincher. I don't, I don't think he was actually at the clinching game, but he was at just about the other, all the other playoff victories for the Avalanche in their title run. Well, I think that could be a sign of things to come for Trent Minor because I really think this guy, I mean, he's got an NHL deal, but I really think that this guy could see NHL action someday, whether it be with the Colorado Avalanche or maybe somebody else. Uh, I think at some point in time, this guy is going to find a spot in the NHL. He's, he's an elite talent. He's proving it here with the Grizzlies. Obviously, that's a dream of every hockey player is to play in the NHL and someday maybe hoist the Stanley Cup. A one roster move today, or maybe two of them, Garrett Metcalf, Comes back to the Grizzlies. He was loaned to the AHL's Calgary Wranglers. He returns to Utah, and he'll be in the Grizzlies roster from now until maybe he gets loaned again because, after all, Garrett Metcalf is good enough to be in the AHL. A former draft pick of the Anaheim Ducks and the Grizzlies did release goaltender Brent Moran, who didn't appear in any games for the Grizzlies. So Garrett Metcalf back on the Grizzlies roster. Brent Moran was released, and that news came earlier today. Well, the Grizzlies are up 4-2. to two. Guy, what do the Grizzlies need to do here in the next 20 minutes? to secure victory, get two standings points, and extend their winning streak against uh, against Wichita to seven games. Well, Tyson, I think it starts with this power play that the Grizzlies are on. They almost have a full two minutes here to start the third period, so if they could come out and score a goal on that, that would be the best-case scenario. Then you'd have a three-goal lead once again. Uh, but if the Grizzlies aren't able to score on this power play, they need to find a way to keep the momentum going after the power play. We've seen times in this game and times in this series against Wichita where uh, even just the slightest thing can switch momentum uh, from one team to the other. And for the Grizzlies, maybe a penalty kill for the for the Thunder uh, can change that momentum in favor of Wichita, and that's what the Grizzlies can't let happen. So if they aren't able to convert on this power play, they need to find a way to keep the momentum in their favor. Grizzlies are on the power play the first minute, 46 seconds of the third period. As Jake Wallen got a tripping minor, 1946, and that was a penalty drawn by Taron Pfizer as he was skating towards the right wing, and Wallen tripped him up as Pfizer was entering the offensive zone. When we come back in two minutes, we'll have third period action as Utah leads 4-2. to two. The Grizzlies are 19-1 and one when leading after two periods this year. Grizzlies have a standing point in six straight road games, and they try to extend it to seven here tonight as they lead 4-2. to two. Third period action coming up next on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today.
I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new bean to cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to Grizzlies Hockey. Third period action will begin here shortly, and we want the fish stories as to what's gonna, what happened with that Penner goal. Now, I think that with Penner, he scores a lot of goals out in front of the net, and I think what Becky's got is probably what actually happened. Martel carried the puck behind the left side of the goal as a goalie, slid to that side. He pitched it out to the right side to Penner, who was in front of the net and chipped it in before the goalie could slide back across. That's probably what actually happened. I think Nadine, uh, her story was a little bit more of a fish story where, you know, Martel's probably having coffee with Pouncey and doing a backflip near Miner's net and kicked it, went over and around all the other players, made it in the back of the net, leaving – leaving a hole, you know, it's, it, it's something like that. You know, it's just, uh, we don't really know. It could have been, as you mentioned, you, you had a pretty great interpretation of what could have happened. You know, Friday we saw a bird flying around mm-hmm. interest or bank arena. It's possible that bird had a factor in what happened in the goal. Yeah. I'd like to believe that Martel flipped the puck into the zone and the bird from Friday snatches the puck out of the air and does a little flyby and drops the puck right on Bajran's head and, and drops it right on his head. Makes that bonk that you hear in cartoon. It's just like a bonk. And he's so dazed, and he doesn't know where the puck is. And then P- Tyler Penner comes in and does a nice spinorama around Bazran and puts the puck in the back of the net. That's what I like to believe happened. Uh, but I guess we'll never know. I'm pretty sure what Becky is interpreting is what actually happened, although you never know. It could have been a bird. could have been that you know the exact story that you mentioned. I like to think that that bird is doing all right. We haven't seen it since Friday, so uh, hopefully it's it's doing well. Funny thing is, I think the technical difficulties might be might have actually been our fault. I don't know. Did you kick open an internet cord? I mean, Tim Broussard used to be great <laughs> at kicking open the internet cord. I mean, he was outstanding at it. I mean, who knows? Maybe we kicked open the internet cord. I don't know. Well, I don't think that I kicked an internet cord. I made sure that when we were having some difficulty to, to kind of just push them in a little bit more of the cords, that is. They weren't loose, so I don't really know what happened. But it seems to have done a little bit of uh, magic here for us. As we've been having, uh, having a pretty good feed so far, though we're going to knock on some more oh, wood. This, thanks. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going <laughs> to I, – I, I knocked on the wood, so we'll see how that turns out. But it, it's – at least we saw the pickleball in the first intermission, right? That's right. We saw the pickleball first intermission. It looked like a lot of fun. Grizzlies are on the power play for the first minute, 46 here of the third period. We're having some fun because otherwise we'd go nuts here. As the Grizzlies won the draw, they're skating from right to left. As you see it on Flow Sports, your mind's eye see it on YouTube as Wichita pokes it back into the Grizzlies zone as Utah is trying to enter. Grizzlies back in their own zone. There's four members in the Grizzlies zone as Utah wants to enter the offensive zone with momentum. Pfizer throws it back to Secos over to right, back to Secos is enter from, enters from the left side. Gets around Jake Dickman, takes a shot, saved by Bazran. And the Wichita goaltender in his pro debut holds on. 120s left in the Grizzlies' power play. And he's getting his first taste of professional hockey. And Roman Bazran has seen a ton of shots, but looks like he's hanging in there. Yeah, he is hanging in there. He had a little bit of a rough start there. And the Grizzlies were really peppering with him with shots in the first period. He seems to kind of have settled into this game a little bit. He's given up four, but he really has been solid for Wichita. Bazran's now saved 31 of 35. Sekos will take the drop. He's got Pfizer to his... Left, I think Jamison to his right. Draw one by Sekos and the Grizzlies. As Pfizer throws the right, back to Pfizer. They'll feed it to the near goal line for Sekos. Across to Jamison, back around looking for Sekos. Puck glided towards the corner slowly. Wichita battles with Utah. Two Grizzlies, two Thunder players over in the near corner. One minute left in the power play. Over to Jamison, skates along the goal line. Shot, saved by Bazran. He holds on as the Grizzlies won that two-on-two battle in the corner, and Jamison got a good scoring chance as a result. But Bazran held on. 
101 left in the Grizzlies power play as Raby nudged it to Jamison out of the scrum. Jamison had a good look, and you talk about Fords who have really stepped up over the last couple months. Keaton Jamison has ju- done just that. Five Fords on the ice. Sekos will take the drop. He wins the faceoff. Beiser gets knocked down by Dickman. No cause. Cameron Wright throws it towards the right corner from the left point. Jamison battles, throws it up top for Raby. Raby in the right point, throws it to the right. He'll glide it to the left side for Pfizer. Pfizer dishes across to Raby, drops it off for Sekos in the right point. Sekos back towards the right corner. He gets it. And Sekos surveys, still holds on to the puck. He'll throw it behind the net for the Grizzlies. As Raby back to right in the left side. As right towards the left point, dance around to the circle. There are 25 seconds left in the power play. Right throws it up top. Grizzlies very patient with our approach. Sekos over to Pfizer. Right side shot. Saved by Bazran. Rebound out in front. It goes towards Sekos. Right side takes a shot and it goes wide. Wichita gets it. Thunder back in their own zone. Quinn Preston will throw it towards his left. Thunder still have it in their own zone as they glide it all the way out to neutralize. It's picked off by Utah. Late in the power play, Grizzlies will skate towards the left circle. Right towards the left circle, skates in. Righty shot goes wide. And Wichita's out of the penalty box. A successful penalty kill by the Thunder. Utah still leads 4-2. to two. Sure at neutralized, gets it taken away by Wallen, who just served that penalty to start the third period. Wallen dumps it in. Grizzlies gather it deep in their own zone. Utah skating from right to left here in the third period as we see it. As two minutes into the third period, Grizzlies skate down the middle. James Sure, one goal and one assist tonight. Drops it off to Cam Strong at center ice. Strong dumps it in. Puck goes towards the right side behind the net. Taken by Zach Kaufman. He throws it to the near side. Pass connects to Huff. Huff around center ice. We'll throw it towards the Utah blue line as Huff got hit by James Shearer. Bryson Martin throws it back to Shearer on the near side. He'll chip it off the glass. It goes to center ice, and it rolls into the Thunder zone. Hoffman couldn't reach it as it goes deeper in the Thunder zone as he's chased after by Fitz. Puck glides along the far boards. It goes to center ice as the Grizzlies back in their own end. Bryson Martin. We'll move it out to center ice in a right wing pass to Martell. Dumps it in. Martell already a multiple point game. One goal and one assist. As the Thunder skating from left to right. Three minutes into the third period. They'll throw it to the near side as Wichita will throw a pass. It's picked off by Penner, but it rolls back towards number 42, Brett Van Oss, who's got six goals and 15 assists this year. Nick Van Oss has one assist here tonight. As the Thunder back deeper behind their zone, behind Roman Bazran. Now they'll feed it to the far side. Both teams very patient here in the third period. As Wichita throws it out to center ice, rolls to Hoffman, who dumps it in. Miner cuts it off behind his net. He'll drift it towards the near wing boards, goes to the right point. Kyle Rhodes keeps it in. The former Rapid City rush skater throws it to the far corner. Rush, uh, Rhodes also played for Tulsa. Simeone bats it out to the left side. It's the Thunder roll it around the boards. Wichita wearing kind of Tampa Bay Lightning color jerseys. Grizzlies in the white will ice the puck. Uh, skating over there is number 26, Cole McDonald. Icing on the Grizzlies. 16-17 left in the third as the Grizzlies are wearing the white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim. Don't forget the Grizzlies are going to be wearing specialty jerseys on March 24th against the Cincinnati Cyclones. It's the second of a three-game series. It's going to be military night at Maverick Center. It's the same jersey that Guy wore on Friday. It's military night with specialty jerseys here at Maverick Center. And the Grizzlies win the drop. They sell it out into the seats. Is it delay of game or did it bounce off the glass? That's the question. 16-14 16-14 left in the third. And it looks like it bounced off the glass. No delay of game. Draw's going to stay in the Grizzlies zone as Utah makes a line change. Dakota Raby's out there along with Cameron Wright and Zach Sekos. That forward line is dangerous with a ton of scoring potential. I think Aaron Thoe's also on the ice defensively for the Grizzlies. He had two goals and two assists on Friday night. Utah won 5-4 in overtime. Grizzlies win the draw. Sure, will lift it out to center ice. Taken by Kyle Rhodes, who moves it ahead off the screen. Grizzlies have the puck in their own zone. And sure, along the near wing boards, will move it ahead to Raby. He crosses center ice. Raby to the right side. Skates in the zone with speed. Raby towards the corner. Now around the net. I tried to chip it out in front, but the puck stayed at Raby. As Wichita will lift it towards the near boards. As Mikel Stanell, their leading score, battles at center ice with Cameron Wright. Wright spins them around. Grizzlies back in their own end with the puck. They'll move it out to center ice. As Utah looks to dump it in, it bounced off the linesman. 15-35 and counting left in the third. Utah still leads 4-2. to two. Zach Sekos out in front of Roman Bazran. Now Sekos will skate off the ice. Good shift by Sekos right and Raby. As Pfizer's out there as the Thunder cross center ice left wing. They'll chip it in. Martin chases after it. He collides with Jake Wallen in the corner as the glass sways back and forth. 
Puck goes to Jamison. He skates along the near wing boards. Now Jamison crosses center ice. He veers off to the right. Now drops it off. Fits across to Pfizer, but it bounced off the stick of Gavin Gould, and the puck flies out of play into the seats with 15.08 left in the second. Neither team's here scored. Neither team scored here so far in the third. It's not necessarily a bad thing for the Grizzlies. Yeah, no, it's not a bad thing. And I, I like the way that the Grizzlies have come out and played in this third period so far. Uh, they're, they're not really allowing Wichita to have a whole lot of chances going the other way. And for the Grizzlies, you just want to see the time kind of melt off the board and protect this lead and maybe, maybe add to it later on. Draws game in the right side. Jamison will take the faceoff. Jamison's kicked out of the faceoff circle. Pfizer will take it. Pfizer's got 18 goals this season, tied with Cameron Wright for the club lead. Wright thought he had scored a goal early in the second period, but is waved off as Wichita wins the draw two on two. Gold overskates the puck. Grizzlies dump it back in. Now the Thunder behind their own net, skate around Bazran's net, and they'll feed it to the near side. Goes to Jay Dickman, who steps over the line, stops on the right point. He'll throw it to the left corner, bounces off the wall. Wichita looks to center, it hits the side of the net. As Fitz moves it ahead, Grizzlies poke it back towards the near boards. As Dickman rolls it around, Gould lets it go past him as it rolls to the far side. As Brett Van Oss, Dominic Dockery over there. Dockery collides with a Grizzly. As Utah gets to Dylan Fitz at center ice. Grizzlies make a line change around him. Fitz crosses center and fires a shot. Bazran makes the save, and he'll move it ahead to Connor Walters. 14-25 left in the third. As the Thunder back in the near side will throw it out to center. And it got tipped as it rolls deep in the Grizzlies zone as Aaron Tho collides with the boards as he was near Brett Van Oss. Puck rolls around Utah's net as James Shearer back towards the far side, feeds over to Tho. He's in the near side as he'll dump it to center ice. Now it goes back to Wichita, who throws it in. Aaron Tho gets it. He's behind Miner's net. Six minutes into the third period, Grizzlies lead 4-2. to two. Tho out to center ice, pass towards the Wichita blue line, poked away by Cam Strong. Goes wide. That was taken by Cameron Huff as the puck rolls towards the left wing. And now Wichita from the left side rolls it back around. It's now around Utah's net. Back to the far side, left point. Thunder shot and is blocked. 13.35 left in the third as the Thunder skate back towards the left circle. Looks like the puck exited the zone. Uh, screen's been freezing on and off. I think you, Wichita might get a penalty. Mark Lewiski is going to skate towards the penalty box. Grizzlies are going to be on the power play when we come back in one minute. 13.33 left in the third as Mark Lewiski gets a penalty. We're back in one minute. Utah leads 4-2 to two on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new bean-to-cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club. Thirteen thirty-three left in the third period. Mark Lewiski gets two minutes for interference. Time of penalty, 627 into the third as he's in the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Grizz are up 4-2. to two. They are 1-4 for four on the power play. Wichita is 0-4. Taron Pfizer out there. Seckles take the face off. Pfizer will be on the right wing. Dakota Raby to the left. Up top is Cameron Wright and I think Keaton Jamison, maybe. As Wichita wins the draw, as they'll cross center ice. As the Thunder skate in. They're being aggressive, shorthanded. Jay Dickman to the left side, tries to chip it across the wall, and Utah picks it off in the slot. As a Grizz moving ahead, left wing pass to Raby. He steps over the line, centers it out in front to Pfizer, and he oh, couldn't get, quite get the pass from Raby. Would have been a great effort as the Thunder clear it out. Great idea there. Raby from the left point, centering it out to Pfizer out in front, but he just couldn't reach it. Pfizer around the net has the puck. First-year pro played for the Victoria Royals of the WHL. Drops off to center ice. Grizzlies chipping off the near boards. Seckos in the area. So is Raby, but Jake Wallen will bounce it off for Raby. Goes to Cameron Wright at center ice. Wright steps over the line. Right side will dump it to the corner as Wright gets blasted by Dominic Dockery. As towards the end wall, Wichita lifts it over the head of a Grizzly. Goes out to center ice. Chasing after it's Quinn Preston. Minor behind his net will drift it to the near side for Taron Pfizer. Halfway through Utah's power play. 
12-30 and counting left in the third. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Taryn Pfizer across the center ice, skates down the middle. Now he'll chip it into the left corner. Cam Strong chasing after it. Pfizer behind the net, being battled by Connor Walters. Puck goes to the right side. Secos back towards Fitz. Now to the high slot. Martel over to Shear. One-timer saved by Bazran. Rebound goes to the right side. It's Grizzlies chip it up top. So Utah just outside the right circle gets the Shearer. Back to the left side, Martel. One-timer, and it goes high as the puck glides along the far boards and out towards center ice. As Utah out to center, throw it back into their own zone. As there's 15 seconds left in the power play. Cam Strong from the left wing dumps it in as he rolls it around to the right corner. Wichita gets it. They clear it out again. It's minor behind his net. We'll play the puck. That will do it for the Grizzlies power play as Mark Lewiski's out of the box. As Utah with one power play goal here so far tonight, they lead 4-2. to two. It goes out to center ice. Thunder back in their zone as it chips off of Gavin Gould. Back towards Fitz. We'll throw it back into the Thunder zone. Wichita moves it out to the right side. Skating in as Gavin Gould will take a lefty shot saved by Miner. Rebound. Wallen shot saved by Miner again. As Jake Wallen towards the left side chips to the corner. Thunder get it back up top. It bounced off a of Simeone stick on to Kyle Rhodes. Now to the high slot for Jake Dickman. He'll bounce it off of Simeone. Christian gets the puck in the far side. Simeone wearing number 24. Moves it towards Dylan Fitz. Thunder pick it off. They throw it back to their blue line. Kyle Rhodes will cross center ice right wing. Drive it around the boards. It hits off the end wall. Bryce Martin moves it to the far side. Grizzlies will cross center. Utah chips across to Tyler Penner. Penner skates towards the left circle. He's all alone. He'll take a shot. Saved by Bazran. Penner looking for a second goal of the game and had a good look there from the left side. Simeone behind the net. Penner's over there. He gets held up. Now Simeone held up as Penner tries to break free. As the Thunder gather the puck. They'll move it out to center ice. Two on two. Wichita gains the line. Drops off for a trailer and Quinn Preston. He'll skate down the middle. He'll take a shot. And looks like Miner's made the save. 10-15 left in the third. Good job by Trent Miner. As Quinn Preston skated in with all sorts of momentum down the middle. He had a good look. He's got 19 goals this season, but Trent Miner does the job. Yeah, Tyson, Trent Miner once again has made another great save in this game, really kept the Grizzlies in this one when the momentum was favoring Wichita. As for the Grizzlies' offensive opportunities, I like the chances that they're getting. Uh, they just need to keep continue putting the pressure on Wichita. Grizzlies four, Thunder two, a high shot count here to so far. Grizzlies are up to 42 shots. Wichita's taken 32. Utah had 58 shots on Friday night. So the Grizzlies up to 100 shots in the two-game series against Wichita. Grizz win the draw. Zach Secos will backhand it to center ice. Raby near the bench area throws it across. Pass connects to Secos, who crosses center ice. He's trying to move it ahead to Raby. Thunder picking off. Wichita skates towards the left circle. Take a lefty shot. It goes wide as the Thunder. Big time hit delivered over there to the near side. And now the Thunder look for Quinn Preston out in front. He couldn't handle it. Puck rolls out to center ice. Martel at center ice dumps it into the corner. Martel chasing after it. He collides with Dominic Dockery, who will feed it back to the corner. Thunder have the puck in the near side. They'll move it out to center ice. As will dish it across. Thunder skate towards the left circle. Grizzlies poke it back to Keaton Jamison. And now the Grizz will move it ahead as it rolls back to the Wichita blue line. Peter, Peter Bates has it, number 12. It's the Thunder skate around the net. 9.20 and counting left in the third. So moving out to center ice, a ricochet off the far boards. It looks like it's going to be icing on the Thunder with 9.15 left in the third. Either team scored here so far in the final frame. As Grizzlies scored three unanswered in the first period. Wichita scored two unanswered in the first half of the second period. James Shearer gave the Grizzlies some insurance as he scored 14 minutes into the second period. Grizzlies have taken 100 shots on Wichita through the two games in this series. Draws on the right side. Grizzlies get it. Fit shot, and it's blocked. And it looks like a Thunder player is down as they were near Dylan Fitz when he took the shot. And it's Mikhail Stanell, the Wichita leading scorer. As he was near Fitz, Fitz took a shot from the right side. Stanell went down, and play stopped. And they didn't. the camera didn't track Stanell back over towards the Wichita bench. We're not sure uh, just how hurt he is or whatever the case is. But it looks like we got a timeout on the ice. We're back in one minute as Utah leads 4-2 to two on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. 
Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Utah leads 4-2, to 9-10 left in the third period. Yeah, the Grizzlies with a pretty good defensive effort here. Yeah, Tyson, I really like the way they've come out and played defensively in this third period. It's really been an all-around great showing for the Grizzlies in this game. Wichita wins the draw two on three. James Shearer pokes it ahead after Wichita entered the attack zone. Grizzlies at center ice, still in fits with a backhand pass towards the right side. Grizzlies dumping in. I think that was Jamison. As Kyle Rhodes, the former Toll Soiler and Rapid City Rush Skater, Moves it towards Cameron Huff along the near boards, deep in the Thunder zone, back to Rhodes, who will now feed it to the left side. Thunder will cross center ice, and they'll chip it in. Pfizer looks after it. James Sure as well. Sure gets the puck, and he'll feed it back to the far side off the boards. Taron Pfizer chases after it. He'll move it ahead as Kyle Rhodes, back in his own zone, wins a foot race with Pfizer. As there's 8.27 and counting left in the third. Thunder cross center ice. They skeet down the middle. They'll take a shot and they get blasted by Utah as they're taking the shot. Great hit by Bryson Martin. Utah moves out to center ice. Pass connects two on one. Grizzly stop in the right circle. Chip it out in front to Strong. Shot saved by Bazran. Over to the right side. Grizzlies right wing shot. It goes wide as they try to go glove side on Bazran. As the puck lines towards the near board, strong in the area. Wichita lifts it over the head of Connor McDonald. Goes back to Penner at the Utah blue line. He'll throw it back to Martin, who's been physical today. Back over to Penner. He throws the center ice. Pass connects to Strong. Left wing across the center and dumps it to the corner. Taken back by Austin Crosley, the former Grizzly captain. Or former Grizzly. So feed it to the far side. As the Thunder move it to the right side. As pass connects to Jay Dickman. He'll dump it around the boards. But the Thunder... Look like they're offside with 740 left here in the third. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Grizz had a two-on-one there and a good look, but just couldn't connect. Yeah, Tyson, it was a really good look. The Grizzlies found a way to take a chance for Wichita if they poked away from them in their own zone and send it the other way. Good look there for the Grizzlies, but Bazram was up for the task. Draws going to be a neutralized after Wichita got called for offside. 740 left in the third. Taking the draw is Zach Sekos against Quinn Preston. Base off one by Wichita. They're at neutral ice. So they'll carry it to the left wing. So they're now in the circle. Thunder feed it back across as Wallen over to Dickman. And the Grizzlies block the shot. And the hand pass is called on Wichita. So the draw comes back to neutral ice. 728 left in the third. Utah still leads 4-2 to two as the Grizzlies taking at least 100 shots here in this series against Wichita, which is certainly odd concern the Grizzlies. Only average 30 shots per game. They're near the bottom, but they've really taken a lot here on the two goaltenders this weekend. Yeah, it's really interesting to see that. And Wichita is another one of those teams that seems to allow a lot of shots per game. I didn't think it would be blown this far out of proportion, uh, but a great offensive showing from the Grizzlies in both games this series. Thunder win the draw. They're a new try, so chip it over to the left side as the Thunder spin it around the boards over to the right side. Sure tries to move it ahead. It stays in the corner as he gets held up. Now Raby gathers it. Raby will push it across near Utah's bench at new tries. Grizzlies get it back to Raby. He skates down the middle. Lefty shot. Saved by Bazran. Knee holds on, but Dakota Raby's really looked good. And then really it's been that forward line that's created some good chances. Raby, Cameron Wright, and Zach Sekos. They really looked strong for Utah. Yeah, they've been great. And I again, we talked about it earlier in the game where you get Cameron Wright and Zach Sekos back in the lineup and you pair them with a guy that's been red hot like Dakota Raby. You got a recipe for success. Really like what I've seen from that line. The forward lineup for the Grizzlies might be as good as they've had all year. Utah leads 4-2, to 7-0-4 left in the third. Draw one by Wichita, and rare faceoff loss for Zach Sekos. The Thunder cross center ice, they'll chip it down the middle. Puck bounced off a of skate and rolls back over. Utah gets it. Raby flies into the offensive zone, left side. He stops near the boards as he gets held up by Connor Walters. Now right, we'll chip it back to Raby, who skates around the net, wraparound shot, and saved by Bazran. Boy, Raby looked like he was skating around the net, 
Thought he had stuck one past Baz Ran, but the Wichita goaltender holds on. And considering how many shots he's seen, and this is professional debut, Roman Baz Ran looks like he's hanging on pretty strong here tonight. Yeah, Tyson, he really is having a good game despite allowing four goals. What I like about what I'm seeing from the Grizzlies right now is they're finding a good balance between playing good offensive game and having a solid defensive showing to close out this game. Grizzlies in the offensive zone. They win the faceoff. Righty shot saved by Baz Ran. He holds on. The shot was taken from the right side by a defenseman. Could be Connor McDonald. He's a right shot defenseman normally. Um, could also have been Kyle Pouncey, who's been paired up with Bryce Martin on occasion. Draw's going to be in the right circle. Utah still leads 4-2. to two. I've seen quite a few whistles here in the third period. And time is on the Grizzlies' side as they're up by two. Utah could use some insurance, though. As Wichita wins the draw, they'll throw it back to Neutrice, where it's taken by Martin. Martin moves it ahead as Dylan Fitz dumps it in. Behind the net, Jamison chases after it. He collides with Dominic Dockery as looks like play is stopped. 628 left in the third. And the faceoff's going to come back into the Wichita zone. Not sure why the draw is going to come back to the Wichita zone. <laughs> yeah, Tyson, I really don't have an answer for that. I, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Our screen's been glitching back and forth. Maybe something happened that we didn't see. Grizzlies win the draw. They skate from right to left. As they cross center ice, Dylan Fitz gains the line. They'll dump it off the end wall. Grizzlies, Pfizer trying to find Fitz out in front. It glanced off a of Wichita stick. The Thunder gather it. They'll feed it out to the right side. They cross center ice. It's Cameron Huff. Gains the line. Arm is raised by the referee. Looks like the Grizzlies have committed a penalty. Hooking's going to be the call. And it looks like it's going to be on Cameron Wright. And he can't believe Or Taryn Pfizer. Pfizer can't believe it, but he's going to the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Two minutes for hooking, 6.09 left in the third. And this is going to be a critical penalty kill for the Grizzlies. So they're going to be shorthanded. Wichita's power play is 20.8% this season coming into play. The Thunder have the best power play at home this season, but they're without one of their top forwards in Braden Watts. And that's a big part as to why Wichita has had such a good power play through the first half of this season. Draw one by Wichita. They'll throw it over to the right point. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Thunder get it over to the left side as Mikel Stanell, who's back after blocking a shot of Fitz a couple minutes ago. Thunder get it over to Bates. Peter Bates feeds it across, picked off by Sekos in the slot, and the Clarkson product will clear it all the way out. Baz ran to the side of his net. will give it to Thunder Skater as Wichita skates around the net. Cole McDonald, left wing pass as they cross center ice. Thunder gained the line. They throw it down the middle for Bates. He'll take a lefty shot and is blocked. Grizzlies trying to clear it out. It stays in. This puck goes back over towards McDonald. He'll feed it to the right side for Bates. Now to the goal line. Dickman over to Bates. Up top for McDonald. He winds and fires, and it's blocked out in front. Miner might have gotten a piece of it as it goes to the left side. Over in the corner, Dickman, halfway through the power play, throws to Bates, who fanned on a one-timer. Grizzlies two on two. They cross center ice with speed. Cam Strong tries to feed it out in front. Grizzlies Tyler Penner gets held up. The puck goes around the net. Now Penner delivers a hit in the right corner, and a stick goes breaking. It looks like Penner's stick broke in the corner. 45 seconds left in the Wichita power play. 4.51 and counting left in the third. Thunder have the puck deep in their own zone as both teams make a line change. Thunder out towards center ice. Cole McDonald casually crosses center. Now he feeds to the left side. Lefty shot saved by Miner. He bobbled it for a second, but then covers up just in front of the crease as we get a whistle. 4.37 is left in the third. 29 seconds left in the Wichita power play. It's still the Grizzlies four and the Thunder two. What would you see there so far in the Wichita power play? Well, interesting moment there where you mentioned Tyler Penner's stick breaks. And you think about a potential jump for the Thunder where they could go and kind of catch the Grizzlies off guard, potentially a five on three going the other way they like not to, and they instead go for the change. Just interesting uh, decision there by the Thunder. Draws going to be over in the left circle. As Wichita wins the face off, they feed it over to the left side. Thunder skate from left to right in the third period. The Thunder drop it back for Huff. So he'll feed it back towards the corner. As Quinn Preston around the wall for Kyle Rhodes. He's on the right side. He gets hit by Jamison. Rhodes breaks free. He's back in the corner. As he stops, now he's being shadowed by Raby. Uh, make that pouncey. As Rhodes spins it back to the left point. 
Thunder feed it across looking for Huff. It bounced off his stick. Out of the box is Pfizer. It's a Utah disaster cleanup successful penalty kill. Shot is blocked from the right side. Rhodes gets it back. Rhodes will take a righty shot. Saved by Miner. And the puck glides towards the left side. Less than four minutes left in regulation. High slot. Lefty shot goes wide as Bryson Martin. Out towards the far side. We'll ski to neutralize. Martin veers off to the left. Cross the center. Drives it around the boards. Bazran cuts it off behind his net. He'll feed it back to the near corner. As the Thunder will lift it out to center ice. It bounced off the stick of number 43, Quinn Preston. Grizzlies dump it back in. As the Thunder, Kyle Rhodes with long hair out to neutralize. Being shadowed by Pfizer. Crosses the center and dumps it in. Sure, is that a good game behind the net? He overskates it. Now, Wichita gets stripped up by Sure. No call. Thunder feed it towards the middle. Picked off by Utah. As Jordan Martel moves dead to Power, who dumps it in from center ice. Martel gets knocked down as he was skating into the offensive zone looking after the puck. As over to the right side, Quinn Preston still with it. About three minutes left in regulation. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Preston crosses center ice, gets around power. Secos takes it away as he'll ice the puck in the thunder zone. Not enough steam for icing, though, as Zach Kaufman runs it down. He'll throw it to the far side as Wichita gets it to center ice. It's picked off by Secos. Seco skates down the middle. Obby's trying to get around Hoffman, who poked it away. As the Thunder cross center, now Hoffman skates down the middle, enters the zone. Righty shot goes wide as the shot was taken from near the blue line. As Wichita moves it ahead, but it's poked away. Jared Power crosses center ice, and he'll bounce it off the end boards with a lot of power on it. So he'll skate out the end of his shift. 225 and counting left in the third. That was really lame. As the Thunder cross center ice, there's got to be some power puns that we'll end up using here at some point. As the Grizzlies toward the near side, Martin moves out towards Martell. As the Grizz will work on it there before the Kansas City game, those power punts. Secos crosses the center ice left wing and dumps it into the right corner. As Grizzlies make a little bit of a change as the Thunder cross center ice, about two minutes left in regulation. Utah takes it away as Wichita was entering the zone. Jamison fires it towards Bazran and makes the save. And with Utah by two, Wichita's got to think about pulling their goaltender here soon. Thunder cross center ice, and they'll chip it around the boards. Jake Wallen did the honors as it rolls back towards the far side. As it's in the Grizzlies zone, good poke check by the Grizz, who have been active with their sticks today. Out to the far side, McDonald moves ahead. Net is empty, and the puck ends up gliding, just misses the net. No icing as the Grizzlies. Taron Pfizer towards the near corner, a minute and a half. Utah leads 4-2. to two. Wichita's net is empty. Wallen takes it away from Pfizer. 122 left in the third. Thunder. Out at neutral ice near their bench. They'll get it across. Grizzlies chase after it. It's taken back by number 26, Cole McDonald. He'll move it towards the near side as the Thunder dish it out to center. Looking for Quinn Preston. Thunder dump it to the Grizzlies blue line. Utah gets it. They'll chip it out towards the empty net. Cut off by the Thunder. One minute left in the third. This one's about being set to put in the refrigerator as Utah leads 4-2. to two. Uh, Stanell loses it. Grizzlies moving out towards center ice, chasing after the puck as Dylan Fitz. He gets it, he'll skate towards the empty net, and he scores. And this baby's in the refrigerator as Dylan Fitz scores on the empty net. And the Grizzlies have taken a 5-2 lead. That's another multiple point game for Dylan Fitz, who has one goal and one assist. And great effort there. Jamison was in the area. He should get an assist as Fitz skated just down the middle on the empty net. And for Dylan Fitz, he's been amazing for the Grizzlies over his last eight games as the Grizzlies are going to sweep the Wichita Thunder in the two-game series and a great effort all around, and particularly in the third period defensively to secure the two standings points. Yeah, Tyson, great effort here from the Grizzlies in this game. As you mentioned, not just offensively, but defensively as well. And we can't forget about the performance Trent Miner's had. Thunder gets to center eyes, dump it in. Miner gloves it in the crease. And so he'll make a save with 36 seconds left in the third. So Dylan Fitz gets the empty net, or I imagine Jamison might get an assist as he was near the area. It looks like Jamison and Taron Pfizer each get the assist. So Pfizer with a point. He's a plus three today. Keaton Jamison is a plus one. He's got one assist. And Dylan Fitz, one goal and one assist. He leads Utah with eight shots. 30 seconds left. Thunder skate around Utah's net. They chip it out in front. And it looks like Trent's covered up. Joy Coltarsi was in the area. So is Simeone. As Trent's done a good job here tonight, he's been busy as well. Uh, as looks like Miner has saved 34 of 36. Grizzlies have 50 shots here so far. They've outshot the Thunder 16 to 8 in the third period. So 58 shots on Friday night, 
And 50 shots here so far tonight. 108 shots in the two-game series against Wichita. Draws going to be over in the far circle. Utah leads 5-2. to two. Grizz win the faceoff. Joey Kulatarsi behind his net. He'll throw it to the far side as Grizz lifting out the center, looking for Cam Strong. Wichita picks it off. Mikel Stinell, or make that Brett Van Oss. He'll skate towards the left point. 12 seconds left as the Thunder lose the puck. Kulatarsi try to clear it out. Thunder cut it off on the left side. Rhodes with a righty shot goes wide. Two seconds left. Puck in the corner as Wichita delivers a hit. Time runs out, and now we'll do it. Grizzlies win. Grizzlies win 5-2, to two, and there is no doubt about it. As they score 10 goals in the two-game series, what an effort by Dylan Fitz, who had one goal and one assist, including the empty netter. At the end, as Jordan Martel also with one goal and one assist, and the same case goes for James Shearer, who had one goal and one assist. He scored a big insurance goal 14 minutes into the second period, and you can't forget about the job that Trent Miner did in net as he stopped 35 of 37 as he secures his 10th victory of the season. He's the first Grizzlies goaltender this season to get double digits and wins, and Miner also had an assist tonight. As the Grizzlies sweep the Wichita Thunder in the two-game series, the Grizz have now won seven straight against Thunder over the last year plus, and the Grizz now have a standing point in seven straight road games. That's certainly big considering that Allen won earlier today, and Kansas City and Idaho are playing in the third period, and right now that game's gone to overtime, so Kansas City gets at least one standing point. So for the Grizzlies, they needed the two points against this Wichita team. It looks like they're in free fall as the Thunder have won one game in their last 12 contests. Grizzlies 5, Thunder 2, postgame show starts in one minute. It's a happy locker room over at Interest Bank Arena as the Grizzlies get the victory 5-2 to two as Trent Miner gets his 10th victory of the season and the Grizzlies record goes to 25-26-3. and three. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life. I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. It's a successful road trip for the Grizzlies. Who won an overtime 5-4 to four on Friday night to defeat the Wichita Thunder. And the second game of the series, the Grizzlies get a 5-2 victory as Dylan Fitz, Jordan Martell, and James Shearer each had one goal and one assist. Tyler Penner found the back of the net, 11-16 in. Kyle Pouncey also scored a goal as second of the year. Taren, Taren Fizer had one assist and was a plus three. James Shearer was a plus two. And really, it was just a great effort all around. As Trent Miner gets the victory, he stopped 35 of 37. He gets his 10th victory of the season. His record goes to 10, 12, and 2. And outside of a four-minute, 10-second stretch there in the second period, the Grizzlies really dominated action. The Grizzlies had 58 shots on Friday and 50 here this afternoon. So 108 shots in the two-game series against the Wichita Thunder. Wichita had 41 shots on Friday and 37 here this evening. Grizzlies had one power play goal, and that was the optum first goal of the game that was scored by Jordan Martell. 8-23 into the contest, Bryson Martin in the goaltender. Trent Miner with the assist as Martell scored from the right side. Kind of went coast to coast from about center ice and as he skated down the middle towards the offensive blue line, then veered off to the right, got to a position where he got in a good shooting angle in the right circle and fired away past Roman Bazran, who was making his professional debut. Bazran stopped 45 of 49. Grizzlies extended the lead to 2-0 after Kyle Pouncey scored 10-24 in. Sure, and fits with the assist. Pouncey scored from the right side on a pass from the left circle from James Shearer. It's one of those passes that went across, and Pouncey was all alone and fired away past Bazran, and that made it a 2-0 game. Then less than one minute later, Tyler Penner scored his 10th of the year. Martell with the assist. 
Uh, we can't really describe much except for Penner score. Our, unfortunately, our screen was froze. We had some technical difficulties, so we didn't see the goal. Sounded like a pretty good play, though, especially if it was Becky's description. Although we want some fish stories. If you saw the goal, we want to hear your stories as to how the goal was scored. We still haven't seen it yet, but Utah leads 3 nothing after Penner scored 11-18, and Penner becomes the eighth different Grizzly player to score 10 or more goals this season. Utah led 3 nothing after one. The Grizzlies outshot the Thunder 21-14 to in the first period. In the second, Wichita got on the board as Cole McDonald scored 406 into the second. Make that 408 into the second. Uh, Peter Bates got the assist, and then the Thunder cut into the lead some more as Gavin Gould got his second of the year. Brett Van Oss and Cameron Huff with the assist. At that point, you're kind of worried and hoping that it wasn't going to be a repeat of what we saw in the last game of the Allen series, but the Grizzlies got momentum back. James Sure got some insurance, and he scored his fourth of the year exactly 14 minutes into the second period. Raby and Wright got the assist. Penner's goal actually turned out to be the game winner uh, as Wichita scored two goals tonight. So for Tyler Penner, it's his 10th of the year, and it turned out to be the game winner. James Sure added some insurance. That was a big goal because that got momentum back on Utah's side, and it, set, it felt, kind of felt like they kept the momentum throughout the rest of the game. Sure, who had two goals during a game during the Grizzlies' last homestand against the Allen Americans, has played some great hockey. He was a plus two and had four shots. Sure's goal from the slot on an odd man rush. Uh, is the fourth of the year, Ray being right with the assist. Utah led 4-2 to two after two periods. The only goal scored in the third frame was an empty netter. It was Dylan Fitz's 15th of the year. He's got a goal in back-to-back games. And you can't say enough about what Dylan Fitz has done over the last month. He's just been outstanding as the Grizzlies needed Fords to step up, and Dylan Fitz has done just that. Keaton Jamison with the assist, and that is his 13th assist of the season. Taron Pfizer had an assist on that one as well, and he now has 18 assists on the season. So 18 goals and 18 assists for Taron Pfizer. We mentioned Cameron Wright, who got the assist in the Shearer goal. He now has the club lead with 42 points this season as he broke a tie with Andrew Nelson, who's currently in the AHL with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. And nelson has got 41 points. Now Cameron Wright passed him as he's got 42 this season. Trent Miner was good in net, but you got to tip your hat to the Wichita goaltender. Roman Bazran, in his professional debut, stopped 45 of 49. He gets the loss. He saw a ton of shots and held in there. Utah was one for four on the power play and a successful five for five on the penalty kill. And five successful penalty kills presented by Utah Disaster Cleanup. As Utah Disaster Cleanup has been around since 1974, and they've been there for customers when we need them the most. That's Utah Disaster Cleanup. Guy, Great effort all around. Penalty kill was successful here this afternoon. Uh, the Grizzlies got a great performance from Jordan Martell, and it seems like there are certain games when Martell looks like Utah's best skater out there, and tonight was one of those nights he really dominated, and in particular in the first period. He really got the Grizzlies jump-started. Yeah, Tyson, that was certainly the case. Martell was a dominant force on the ice for the Grizzlies, and if he can keep that up consistently for the remainder of the season, watch out for these Utah Grizzlies because they're starting to really come into their own. They're playing really great hockey right now. Grizzlies had 108 shots in the two games in this series, 58 shots on Friday and another 50 here this afternoon. And so for the Grizzlies, that's not, that's kind of unusual from this particular year as they're near the bottom in terms of shots per game, but they really took it to Wichita. And I think Utah can be at its best when the offense is playing aggressive as it is. Yeah, Tyson, I agree with that. And I thought the Grizzlies really were aggressive offensively in the first period. And I like that. I like that the Grizzlies are going out, applying the pressure, kind of setting the tone, playing the game the way that they want to play it. And so for them to go out there and put up the number of shots that they did, which is something that you mentioned before is unusual for them, is they usually average about uh, 30 shots per game. I think we're starting to see this team turn or turn the corner here and really find a way to become more offensively dominant and not really rely on the power play, which is what we saw throughout the first half of the season. Now this team has shown that they can score five on five, so the Grizzlies are becoming dangerous. We're obviously doing a little bit of scoreboard watching. It uh, looks like Idaho and Kansas City are headed for a shootout, tied at two. So obviously the game is important, and really it's a big victory for the Grizzlies in terms of the standings. Allen won 7-5 to five against Rapid City earlier today. And so Allen now has 57 points. The Grizzlies with 53. Wichita with the loss stays with 57. And so Allen and Wichita are tied for third in the Mountain Division. Kansas City has at least one standing point. They'll stay in second place. And uh, we'll see if they get that second point. That game looks like it's going to a shootout. 
as we speak over at Cable Dahmer Arena, Idaho and Kansas City tied at two. Earlier today, Allen defeated Rapid City seven to five. You know, without Andrew Nelson, you know, I talk about Fords needing to step up over the last month. There had to be some defensemen to step up in the absence of Andrew Nelson. Grizzlies are also without Corey Thomas and Victor Bartley. And James Shure really stepped forward today. Friday was Aaron Tho with the two goals and two assists today. It was James Shure who had one goal and one assist. He blocked a lot of shots. He really did a good job getting in the Wichita passing lanes. You know, it seems like all year he seems to be a defenseman that seems to be in the right place at the right time. It doesn't necessarily always show up on the snap sheet. But James Shearer, once again, was solid for the Grizzlies. Yeah, James Shearer for the Grizzlies has just been old reliable this season. He's really been reliable defensively. And now, over the last couple of weeks, we started to see him chip in offensively, which is great to see. And you mentioned Aaron Thos, four-point performance uh, on Friday. That's awesome to see. And then Kyle Pouncey was the guy today where he steps in, scores a goal for the Grizzlies. And you mentioned James Shearer. I mean, guys, all throughout the Grizzlies' defensive course seem to be chipping in not only defensively but offensively. And in this series, I think it's really keen to see that the Grizzlies only gave up two goals in this game against in a series where <laughs> they played against Allen where they gave up a lot of goals. And it was like, oh, boy, what are we going to do about the Grizzlies' defense? And they seem to have really found a way to kind of go back to what they do best, which is playing solid defense. And they've done that here against Wichita. McDonald played solid defensively as well. Didn't really show up on the snap sheet. He was not even in the plus-minus category. Um, Aaron Thoe played well once again. He was a plus-one this afternoon. You know, Kyle Pouncey going back to Wichita. He only played in five games with Wichita. He was there four games at the end of the 2019-2020 season, and then you know, obviously the season got canceled. He probably would have played some more games with Wichita had the season not gotten canceled and then played one game at the start of the 2020-21 season. Only half the teams played in the league, and it's possible Pouncey was good enough to make that roster. But, you know, it's like it was a numbers game because you had so many good hockey players that weren't playing because only half the teams in the league were playing. So Pouncey found himself available. He played, I think, in the Federal League two years ago. Last year was solid with the Grizzlies. And this year, it seems like with more playing time and an added responsibility, Kyle Pouncey's really played well. But you think about the the real question here. Who won the drink with the with the, you know what? We got two Dr. Peppers. That's the thing. We got two Dr. Peppers sitting in the fridge right now. Now, the question is, I put it on to you. It was your responsibility to pick a winner. Is it going to be Nadine or is it going to be Becky? We want our best description of the Tyler Penner goal, which actually turned out to be the game winner because we didn't we didn't get to see it. Um, the real question is, what's your criteria? Is it you want accuracy in terms of um, in terms of accuracy as to what the play really was, or do you want a, a complete fish story and exaggeration of what the play was? That's really the question that you've got as to who's going to get the Dr. Pepper. Oh, boy, this, this is a tough decision. This is tough responsibility because, on one hand, I, I do appreciate Becky telling us what actually happened on that play. It's really good because we didn't get to see that, but I am I am a sucker for a good fish story. I do like some good exa- exaggeration and a good uh, – a good fib here and there. So, oh man, that's a tough decision. Oh man, I, I think I, I think I got to give it to Nadine. I just I, I like a good fish story. But again, thanks to Becky for telling us what actually happened on that play, as unfortunately our internet had failed us in that moment. So, but uh, I think I got to give it to Nadine. So Nadine, just stop by section 114 before Friday's game. We'll give you the Dr Pepper. And you know what? We bring that other Dr Pepper, and Becky just shows up in section 114. Should get a Dr. Pepper as well. Don't tell her that, though. That sounds like a fair deal to me. Grizzlies win 5-2. to two. They sweep the two-game series against Wichita. And over the years, the Grizzlies have had a lot of success against the Thunder. They went 5-0 and oh against them last year. Two years ago, you know, the Grizzlies pretty much broke even with Wichita, who had a really outstanding club. I think the Grizzlies, though, are catching Wichita at a good time, though. Evan Beitenheis, their top goaltender, went to Europe. They also had another goaltender get called up to the AHL. And Wichita is without one of their best forwards in Braden Watts, who might be their second best forward, only due to only behind Mikel Stanell. Um, Stanell had five shots for Wichita today, uh, but uh, you know the Grizzlies catching Wichita at a good time. They've had success against the Thunder in the past. Remember, Wichita will be at Maverick Center for a big three-game series, March 29th, 31st, and April 1st. That's going to be towards the end of the regular season. Don't forget, guy, we got live hockey at Maverick Center this weekend. That's where we're at right now. We're in the Grizzlies lobby. It's going to be an AFC Friday. What in, and we talk about AFC Friday when we talk about it often because it's every Friday home game for the Grizzlies, and it's an outstanding deal. You talk about an $8 ticket. Tickets start at just $8 when you pay using your AFC debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. 
one of the best deals you can get around. And then Saturday, the Stanley Cup will be in the building. The Stanley Cup, we're having affiliate night as the Grizzlies are honoring the NHL affiliate, the 2022 Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche, and the Cup will be in the building. Now, there was an auction on the Nash auction app, and tickets went so quickly for the photo ops. I think the Cup will be somewhere in the building that fans could see during the game. Uh, there will be a season ticket older time on Saturday. I think it's somewhere from like 2.15 to 4.45 with the cup, with season ticket holders. And then I think if you just get a ticket Saturday, I imagine you're at least going to see the cup on the ice. It might be over. I'm not sure where it's exactly going to be during the game, but I do know that you're going to get a glance if you come to the Saturday's game of seeing the Stanley Cup in the building, live and in person, the best trophy in all of sports. Oh, boy. I mean, that that is, that's just fantastic on its own. And then you add that AFC Friday deal to that. I mean, geez, wow. I mean, like every time I hear that deal for AFCU, I, I just think that can't be real. That's too good of a deal. How does that exist? But it does. And so I think that you, yes, you should pounce on that right now and get that done for $8. Oh, my goodness. What a steal. Go pick that up. And then the Stanley Cup will be in the building on Saturday. I mean, gosh, that's just crazy. That, you you got to come see that. And Sunday's going to be a three o'clock start. You know, who knows what's going to happen on Sunday? You know, sometimes those final games can end up being the most physical. We didn't necessarily see that against Wichita. We didn't see, you know, too many fisticuffs here today, although play did get get chippy and a little bit physical towards the middle of it. But, uh, you know, for the Grizzlies, they do get Garrett Metcalf back. The news earlier today, Garrett Metcalf comes back to the Grizzlies as he was loaned uh, about a week ago to the AHL's Calgary Wranglers. Grizzlies did release goaltender Brent Moran. So the Grizzlies back with their threesome of Miner, Parikh, and Metcalf. Miner played in both games this weekend, and he got two victories. He now has 10 on the season. And as we've been mentioning all year, you know, with the Grizzlies goaltending, um, that's going to keep them in just about every game, especially when Miner's got his A game, like it looked like he had for the majority of today. You know, you got Lucas Parikh, who can win against anybody, and Garrett Metcalf. You're talking about three solid goaltenders the Grizzlies have. Yeah, Tyson, and I really think that it's a blessing for the Grizzlies to have all three of these guys on their team. I mean, you look at a team like Wichita, and no disrespect to Capelmaster or Bazaram, because both of those guys actually played quite well for them this week, and I thought uh, ever since Biden has left, I mean, they've really been reeling in goal. They had Eric Dopp for a while, they had Arvinitis. They're just trying to find that guy that could kind of help them. Uh, solidify their goaltending and they just haven't been able to find that so for the Grizzlies to have three qualified guys elite talents that they can throw in on any given night I mean that's just that's just awesome that's a great situation to be in and for the Grizzlies you know it is certainly a big goaltending situation I think that you know, if the Grizzlies are going to make a playoff run first they got to get to the playoffs right now they're in fifth place uh, just an update on that Kansas City game um, Idaho beat Kansas City in a shootout so Stillhead's got the two standings points, but Kansas City did get one. It looked like A.J. White got the game winner in the shootout in the third round. And so Idaho uh, gets the 3-2 to two victory. Uh, McLaughlin and Nick passed a job with the Kansas City goals as Kansas City scored the first two goals of the game before uh, Idaho responded with two unanswered of their own. The Grizzlies really handled themselves against Kansas City strongly in December, sweeping a two-game series. Uh, Keaton Jamison got a Gordie Howe hat trick in the first game of that set on December 17th. And then the following afternoon, Lucas Preak had a 32 save shutout. Utah's four and one against Kansas City this year. But the Mavericks, in terms of the standings, they really won enough games to you know, sneak their way into second place in the Mountain Division. So Tad O'Had looks like he's got his crew rolling. Kind of looks like just looking at the standings, though, Kansas City's been a team that's been really strong at home. They are 17, six and seven at home. They've struggled on the road, just 9-16 and 16 away from Cable Dahmer Arena. So can the Grizzlies take advantage of a club that does look like it's been solid? Uh, you know, they're 5-4-2 and two in their last 11 games. But can the Grizzlies find a way to get at least two out of three against Kansas City? Well, consider the Grizzlies are battling for a playoff spot, and there's only 17 games left in the regular season. Can't underestimate the importance of getting at least four standings points, if not more against Kansas City this weekend. Yeah, Tyson, these are big games, and the Grizzlies certainly need to win these games. Uh, you talk about Kansas City. This is a team that we haven't seen, you mentioned, since December. Uh, you know, The Grizzlies have historically played well against Kansas City, uh, but again, the Grizzlies had played well against Allen until they saw them the last two times. So for the Grizzlies, I think you just need to take this one game at a time. Uh, you need to come in. Uh, don't overlook this opponent. Kansas City's had a solid season, so... Uh, take it at face value. If you play your style of game and go into it with full confidence and play the way that you know we can, we can the Grizzlies can play. We've seen them play at an elite level. We saw it here this weekend. If they go and do that, 
And then I see no reason why they won't be able to win at least two out of the three. Three stars of the game. Number three star is Trent Minor. He's not 35 of 37. He gets his 10th victory of the season. Trent Minor is the third star. Number two star, the rooster, Jordan Martell, who had one goal, one assist, was a plus one, and had three shots. He's the number two star. Number one star, James Shearer. One goal, one assist, was a plus two, and had four shots. And he scored that big insurance goal 14 minutes into the second period. And if we had a play of the game sponsor, which we probably should, we'll find a play of the game sponsor. I'd say James Shearer's goal just because of the importance of it. Wichita had scored two unanswered. They'd had a little bit of momentum. Grizzlies really with that odd man rush. It looked like a three on two, and then Shearer sure just skated down the middle, was trailing the play. Grizzlies were able to get him with a pass, and he was all alone and just kind of fired away. He's one of those guys that's got a good enough shot to where if he puts himself in the right position like that, he could probably score six or seven goals a year. And so he's the number one star of the game. And as we mentioned earlier on the postgame show, can't underestimate the importance he's meant to the Grizzlies all season long. Yeah, Tyson, for sure. And really, that was a beautiful shot by James Sher. It seems like all the goals that he scored, his shot is fantastic. I wish he'd use it a lot more. But we talk about him defensively. He's just been great. I mean, he really has a great all-around game. He's just a really well-rounded player, solid on the blue line, and then he can chip in offensively. I'd like to see him do that a lot more because really, like I said, his shot is great. Yeah, he's got a good shot. And it was great to see Zach Seko's back after missing about two months, pretty much missing two months. You know, he got it was really it's almost like three months since he's played with the Grizzlies. He spent most of December in the AHL with the Colorado Eagles. They played a couple games at the end of December. He got hurt on December 30th against Idaho. He missed a month, came back on February 3rd, played about half that game, got hurt again. It might have been just I don't know if it was the same injury that he had before, but, you know, he upper body uh it was about upper body injury that he had uh, missed another month came back his first game in a month was on friday he missed exactly a month got the game winning goal 622 in and even though you know you talk about that forward line you know we talked about raby secos and Wright. it doesn't show up on the box score necessarily but those guys played an outstanding game and when you see about the playmakers especially if secos Wright, and raby are back on the line against kansas city you're talking about the speed of Sekos and Raby and the playmaking ability, the shooting, uh, you know, the, the threat to shoot from anywhere on the ice as Cameron Wright is. That's a forward line that if it plays together against Kansas City could be lethal here at Maverick Center. Yeah, Tyson, I think that's the scary thing about the Grizzlies if you're looking at the pers- perspective from the opponent is there's a lot of weapons on this Grizzlies team. And I think it's only a question of not if they can score, but if they can score consistently. We know Cameron Wright's lethal. We know Taron Pfizer lethal. We know that there's guys all throughout this lineup that can score at will. The question is, is if you can do this consistently, then you got yourself a heck of a hockey team, and I'd really like the Grizzlies' chances going down the stretch. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens. Remember, the Grizzlies will be here at Maverick Center against the Kansas City Mavericks Friday and Saturday night at 7 o'clock and Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. AFCU Friday will be on Friday, obviously, every Friday, AFCU Friday. Tickets start at just $8, and you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. Saturday is when the Stanley Cup's going to be here, and Sunday is going to be fun as well. So for the Grizzlies, they get a 5-2 victory over Wichita. They took 108 shots in the two-game set. Um, before we get head out of here, Guy, any final thoughts? Well, Tyson, I think my confidence in the Grizzlies has been restored. That Allen series had a little bit of a bitter ending and the Grizzlies blew a 3 nothing lead to the Americans. But this series, the Grizzlies have looked fantastic. You mentioned over 100 shots in two games, five goals in each of the last two games. The Grizzlies seem to be firing on all cylinders. The defense is playing well. And Trent Miner is, is being fantastic as usual. So I really like what I'm seeing from the Grizzlies. We're on to Kansas City. We're on to Kansas City. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think one of the Kansas City Mavericks owners is a member of the Hunt family. I think Lamar Hunt Jr. Or I think Lamar Hunt Jr. actually owns the Kansas City Mavericks. Uh, so... Think about the champion Kansas City Chiefs. The Stanley Cup will be in town on Saturday, and we'll see Tad O'Had's crew. Tad O'Had in his third season as Mavericks head coach, and it's going to be a ton of fun. Make sure you get your tickets to utahgrizzlies.com or call 801-988-8000. That's 801-988-8000. I recommend doing that during business hours because I don't think there's anybody here to answer the phones. I think it's just you and I here tonight. But uh, you know, we had a little bit of fun here this weekend. Grizzlies. Got the two victories. They won five to four in overtime on Friday and five to two here this afternoon. Once again, for Guy Carenza, I'm Tyson Whiting. And in two hours and 19 minutes in front of 3,398 over Interest Bank Arena, James Shearer, 
Jordan Martell and Dylan Fitz each had one goal and one assist, and Trent Miner stopped 35 of 37 as the Utah Grizzlies defeated the Wichita Thunder 5 to 2. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. We apologize, though, for being on remote as well, we we're only able to see what we were able to see, but hopefully it made sense to the audience, at least enough sense. And well, we had a little bit of fun along the way. And you know, we'll hope that we'll be here on Friday night. Next broadcast will be at 6.50. That'll be when the coverage starts. Face-off will be at 7.10. Once again, for Guy Krenza, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is.